road speed, 45 miles per hour. The pit window for fuel, 65 to 70 laps. The driver will be screaming, I want tires about lap 20 at this place. The FedEx racetrack keys, race the racetrack. What that means is you race the elements here for 450 miles, then see who's left for those final 50 miles and go at it at the end. Don't overstand your equipment. This place will get you in more trouble trying to get more than what your car has in it than any racetrack we go to. Give and take. Don't take what isn't there. And if you trust me, if you want to take more than you'll give, you'll have a big DNF by your finish at the end of the night. Might add a key word in there too, anticipation. Absolutely. Always anticipate what's going to happen ahead of you. For more information, including DW's hotspots, log on to foxsports.com. Keyword FedEx. No, by the way, Mike, uh, everybody look at these walls right now. They're nice white. They are. Race it over with. They, <laughs> be, well, they painted them they today. Painted them no, today. they all night long <laughs> in yeah. part of the day. So from last when this night. race over with, you'll say, I thought those walls were white when the race started. I mean, before even the Bush cars left here last night, they had the spotlights and the painters out there painting these walls. The very first race here, Labor Day, 1950. Johnny Mance driving a completely stock Plymouth won at an average speed of 75 miles an hour. He started 43rd in a 75 car field and won $10,000, which was big money in 1950. Mance's key, he had six or eight ply truck tires on his car that didn't blow out as often as the passenger car tires used by most of the rest of the field. Smart. There you see our weather there. Temperature right now 76 degrees. The track 81 degrees. And you saw the piece of asphalt that Jeff Hammond had in the pre-race. This surface is like a piece of 20 grit sandpaper. It just eats the tires away. So what? when the track cools down, it's just going to give the tires more grip on into the evening. Casey Kane trying to do what's only been done here eight times before and win from the pole. David Pearson did it three times. Freddie Lorenzen twice. Richard Petty, Bill Elliott, and Dale Jarrett, plus Dale Earnhardt, one year when time trials were rained out, started first and won. Larry, you just kind of, a light went off when you said that. They're going to go faster after the sun goes down. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Probably not. Because it, faster is not better here. No, I mean, when they designed this racetrack 50-something years ago, I think they were thinking more maybe 90, 100, 110 miles per hour. Last night in qualifying, Casey Kane almost 170 miles per hour average, almost defies the law of physics. What about having three rookies starting in the top five? Clint Boyer is third. David Stremme qualified fourth. Denny Hamlin fifth. Oh, they'll they'll uh, respect this place a whole lot more when the night's over with. They won't be so brave when they come back next time. And if you believe in numbers, 102 previous races here, only 13 races have been won from a starting position outside the top 10. We only have one previous winner in the top 10, the man that won here a year ago, Greg Biffle. Two cars to the rear, Sterling Marlin, and the 44 of Terry Labonte making his final Darlington start in his long and storied career. They both changed engines. And what you have to remember and know, both of those engines are Hendrick engines. And I talked to some of the guys from the Hendrick camp. Both of them had very similar problems. So there was a little bit of concern knowing that there's another four, five, six Hendrick engines in this field. In fact, Sterling Marlin did not even get any final practice. It happened the minute the track opened for final practice. Well, that means he's got a really good attitude then because he didn't he's get not, out there and aggravated. Aggravated. He's not aggravated. <laughs> the 48th spring Nextel Cup race at Darlington is set to get underway. Well, DW, it's Saturday night. We're in Darlington County. Let's get this Saturday night party started. Reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. I had boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys. Casey heard me. Sadler to the bottom. Grabs the spot, moves up to fourth. Pretty clean through one and two that time. You know, used to here, we had to, we'd wait a while before we got up against the wall like these guys are now. Now you go straight to the top. That's where all the grip is, what little there is. 
Now, what's going to be interesting, and I want to watch Jeff Gordon in the 24 cars. We'll watch Casey Kane in the nine. Jeff Hammond was telling me before the race, remember, Larry, the top 10 qualifiers, they had to start on their qualifying tires. And trust me, even one lap on your tires can make a difference here at this place. Jeff Gordon qualified 12th. He was able to start the race on brand new, fresh tires. I'd rather qualify 11th or 12th than 7th or 8th or 9th right in there. And he's just smart enough guy to know that and do that. You want to know how bad this place is? Daryl, you talked about the sand in the pre-race pit and the windshield. We're at lap two. The teams have already been given the extra man to clean the windshield. Well, that's because all those guys are already complaining. I can't see anything. The sun, that's the big factor right now until it sets off a of turn two. It's going to cause these guys a lot of headaches. It'll, it'll be fine in an hour or so, but down the back stretch, you're driving smack into the sun. Watch out of Denny's car. You can't see a thing. Look at that. All the way up on the straightaway halfway down the straightaway, all the way to turn three, and you can see. And Darrell, of all places, can. turn two. It, it's the most treacherous place on this racetrack. It's the whole racetrack's treacherous, it's, but especially turn two. It's really bumpy over there. They put some patches in there last year. It was pretty nice, but this year they've settled a little bit, and it's real bumpy. Jeff Gordon just moved into the top 10 as we watch Sadler, and now here is Kevin Harvick, who has just been passed by Bobby Labonte. And there's the crossover move by Harvick. The guy on the outside, you got to give. You can't let that guy force you all the way up because it's so dirty up there. Here comes Tony Stewart. He'll do a slide job on Bobby. Now Slides up the hill. Be anxious to see how this 20 car is because of all the drivers we interviewed in happy hour final practice last night, Tony Stewart was probably the unhappiest with his race car. Said it would not turn in a 10 acre field. Brian Vickers moves underneath Sadler. Boy, Sadler just looked like, uh, of course, he had no choice. He had to give, but he looks really slow right now. That car's backing up. Kurt Busch flashes past. I think there might be something wrong with that 38 car, or else he's just trying to find a hole to get into. Not a bad thing. Don't let anybody get up on your back bumper right now. You don't need that. Now, Sadler's lost four positions in a lap and a half. This is one of those places when the car starts to hound you, really riding your back bumper, you got to let him go because he'll run over you if you don't. Mike, you talked about rookies that qualified up front. And how about David Streamy here? He, he didn't qualify fifth. He doesn't even have a top 20 finish this year. Here he is driven by a couple of cars, sitting there running in fourth now in this 40 car. What a confidence builder for this young man. Well, tough racetrack. He needs to turn things around. The other three rookies are getting all the glory. I look for this kid to step it up. Three wide going into turn one. Look at that. Well, it settles out as Jamie McMurray Woo! makes a bold Boy, move in Mc the 26. McMurray was all down on the apron. And he slid up front of those guys. Tell you what, look at Mark Martin there off turn two. He had his hands filled. We talk about give and take our FedEx racetrack keys. If there's a man that knows how to give and take, Mark Martin in that six car, it's his type of a race. And that's one of the other drivers that come on the radio and say, what is he thinking anyway? We haven't <laughs> run but 20 laps. Let me run 10 laps. Harvick moves into the top 10 and pulls Stewart along for the ride. We were talking about rookies and Stremi in particular. Dick Bergeron has more. Car. That's not really not one of Stremmy's cars. He borrowed it uh, from one of his teammates, Reed Sorensen. That should be a number 41 car. They've also gone to the same setup that the other people are using in his team. They had strayed off that setup and were trying some things on their own. And obviously what they're doing is working well. Steve. Well, Dick, we've seen drivers already early in this race. Let other drivers go by as you're on board with Denny Hamlin. Hamlin told me last night the biggest lesson he learned was to let another driver pass him. He said they are much better on the long runs. He said, I hate it when other drivers go past me, but I did learn that last night. We're going to be good the longer this race goes, Matt Yoakum. 38 car of Elliott Sadler lost the 11th spot to Tony Stewart in the 20. Elliott says the car just way too free early on on his entry. So he's doing what DW said 
earlier in the show. Just sit back and pace yourself. Show patience. And that's what Tony Stewart in the 20 said about three laps ago. Guys, I'm just being patient. So they said, you know what? We really appreciate it, especially this early on. Well, I know one thing. You talk about Tony Stewart in the 20 car. For a car that was not turning last night, that car is flying through the middle of the corner where the car really has to turn. 11 laps complete, Casey Kane has led them all in Darlington. About the speed drop off as the tires wear. And you see Kane's laps seven miles an hour slower than when he started the race. Yeah, 17 laps. It's basically two seconds on the stopwatch. You know, if these guys go about seven or eight laps and the caution comes out, they're pretty much going pit road for four tires. We've talked about rookies. How about this fella, Clint Boyer, running a strong second place through this race, 1.2 seconds off the lead. Every night it's one of them, or every race it's one of them. You know, last week's Hamlin, last night the Bush race is Hamlin, tonight it's Boyer. Every night, one of these talented young men in good equipment is up there uh, racing for the lead. Ryan Newman, it's been a while since he's been to victory lane. More than one out of every three Darlington races have been won from the front row. Those odds stand in Newman's favor. You know, we always like to talk about comers and goers, and a lot of times when he qualifies poorly, he's always pretty much a comer. Matt Kenseth in the 17 car didn't get that good of a qualifying run in, qualified 31st. He's already picked up 10 positions in 19 laps. Right now, he's about a half a lap behind our leader, Casey Kane, but he was so good in that bush race, a lot like his teammate Mark Martin, it's his type of a race, patience. 500 miles here, nice patient driver, stay out of trouble, run by yourself like he is right now, that usually pays off. Dick? Well, Kenseth finished second last night and certainly learned and saw some patience there. I should also remind you that when he won in California earlier this year, Kenseth started in 31st position, exactly the same spot he's in tonight, and both Kenseth and his crew are very aware of that number. Thanks, Dick. How about his Roush Racing teammate, Greg Biffle? Biffle just climbed into fifth place, passing David Stremme, and uh, they've been uh, busy on the two-way radio. Nice job, bud. Take care of your stuff. How's your car? Not bad. All right, just take care of your stuff here. And as he exits off turn two, now Biffle was saying the car tight on the exit of turn two and turn four, but he's coming off a great run at Richmond where he felt like it was a win the way his season has gone, just trying to rebound and battle back. He won here a year ago. They really feel like the car was too loose in qualifying. It's gonna be great here as the sun continues to set. Now, Daryl, as Matt pointed out a while ago, you won here five times. Yeah, you don't want a car knocking the fence down with the front end, but you cannot be loose at this racetrack. It'll get you in trouble quicker than anything about this track. Yeah, you can, when you got a tight car, you can use the gas pedal. You can get in the gas, get out of the gas, and make it turn. When it's loose, you never know what's going to happen next. Saw Bobby Labonte try to cut to the bottom right there. That just snaps loose on you. There's not a lot of grip, and when you turn the wheel hard like he did there, sometimes the back end will just step right out. That fight with Brian Vickers is for 14th place. See it step out again there, Bobby. A little bit snappy loose off the corner. Now what about Carl Edwards? Edwards was up there and contending, and he's fallen back 24 seconds behind the leader in 36th place. Steve? Yeah, Mike Carl Edwards in the 99 is a goer right now. As you said, started seventh. He's dropped all the way to 36, dropping like a rock. Before the race even started, he expressed some concern of crew chief Wally Brown about the gear ratio they had chosen. And since then, he has said this car is so tight, it is undrivable. I was going to say, Steve, just watching this car, the gear is the least of their problems right now. That car is all over the place. He certainly needs a caution right now. Tony Stewart is flying through the field. You saw he just passed David Stremme, and Kurt Busch has been trying to follow Stewart up through. Tony's up to sixth. You know what I like about Tony Stewart and Greg Zippadelli? He hated that car yesterday. Yeah. I don't like the car's junk, but his crew chief overnight, they got that old magic wand out, waved it over that thing, did a little bibbity bobbity boo She's on the move today. And how many times have we seen that with well, that group? That's the good thing about that team. You know, they're not happy in practice, but they got ways of fixing it. They got teammates, for one thing, they're running pretty darn good. A Denny is, and uh, that's a lot of good information. 
Time for our first singular virtual crew chief question. Can a driver more than 400 points away from the lead still make it into the chase for the next Dell Cup? Right now, at this moment, 13 drivers are within 400 points. To answer, text the word CREW to 191 on your singular phone or log on to foxsports.com slash singular. By Brian Vickers in the back straightaway. Vickers surveying the damage. He is okay. Let's see what happens coming off turn two. Ooh. Now Bobby Labonte was the car right behind him. We'll show you other views in a moment. But pit road is open. And it's a busy place. Steve? Mike Denny Hamlin saying his car is loose in and loose in the center. But all things considered, this race car is really good. They're going to make a track bar adjustment down and make an air pressure adjustment in the right front tire, Dick. Clint Boyer started in third. His best qualifying effort of the entire year has been running in second the majority of this event. To Matt. Pole sitter Casey Kane, fifth and third in his last two Darlington starts. So the car way too loose. Significant chassis and air pressure adjustments for the nine. Meanwhile, the 12, Ryan Newman, he wants just a small tweak, a small adjustment as Kane will win the battle off here road. Newman's team also made an air pressure adjustment and a piece of tape on the grill. Thanks, Matt. Let's have another look here and see if there was contact between Bobby Labonte in the 43 and Brian Vickers. They're certainly close enough. Let's see what happens here. It just appears that that 25 car just gets snappy loose. I mean, he drives out behind his teammate, and when he does, the thing just jumps loose with him. And remember, he's driving straight into the sun as well. Yeah, this is in the back straightaway. Look at the glare on Junior's windshield. Here comes this right, there you go. Go high, go high. There you go. So no contact, but a spin by Vickers and a hit into the wall. Puts us under the first caution of the night. And there's a happy bunch, the Ray Evernham crew. They won the battle off pit road, came in leading, they left leading. We've got 42 cars that were still on the racetrack. All 42 cars were on pit road. I've seen that celebration a couple of times already this year. And they've got that number one pit spot by Again. Uh, qualifying on the pole. They, right got, the it, they, got, the pit uh, they got it going on. Our crack statisticians have amassed the list of Darlington stripes so far tonight. Nine. I don't know if that stripe's going to be long enough there to contain all the numbers by the time the night's over. It's probably going to be triple digits. This well, was more than a stripe here. Just remember, these are retaining walls. If it wasn't for that, they'd be out of here. Oh, yeah. Here's our Wendy's race menu. We go to Charlotte in two weeks. Oh, boy. The CarQuest Auto Parts 300 on FX sat on May 27th. 7.30 Eastern Time and Sunday, May 28th. Don't miss Nextel Cup Racing with the Coca-Cola 600 at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. That is in two weeks. And those are the next point races on Fox. Of course, next weekend, we'll be in Charlotte for the All-Star break. Everything under the lights again. Ride with Tony Raines in the DLP Chevrolet as we get set to go back to green. And Harvick's coming back in. Must have felt something, either a tire. How about it, Matt? DW, he was complaining about the car possibly running too hot on that last run. His spotter said another car behind as the green flag's coming out. Didn't feel like they were leaking anything, but they saw water in their pit stall. Going to come back in and check the ductwork. Of course, he has to maintain 45 miles per hour down this pit road right here, very long pit road. Just remember Jeff and I were talking about, and I know Jeff down in his uh, cutaway car has got that shaker screen that we run behind the grill here to keep all the rubber and trash out of the radiator. This place is notorious for stopping up your radiator. We got a battle for the lead, boys. Hello, Newman. Had a run, thought better of it, but right behind them for third, Greg Biffle. Makes a move on Denny Hamlin. Darrell, this is what we saw last night. The first couple laps after a restart, everybody get what you can get. Fresh tires, you got to take advantage of them because uh, after about 10 laps, very difficult to make a pass without taking a chance. What a call to move right now is that 31 car, Jeff Burton. He just bumped up into the top 10 after starting back there in the 20th position. Jeff Burton really likes this racetrack, has a couple of wins here. Kind of like. 
kind of like keeping an eye on the old uh, couple of cars up ahead of uh, Jeff Burton there. The 2 0 and the 2 4, perhaps? You got it. Yeah. Big orange and the flamethrower. Seventh and eighth for Stewart and Gordon. Biffle for second place. And there he is. You know, when Kevin Harvick came down pit road, there was something square on the front of the nose on that car. Didn't know if it was a piece of debris or the result of contact. Let's see what happens here. It's a pretty good lick into the back of Carl Edwards in the 99 car, but I don't know no. if it could have maybe. The thing about it, you, they talked about the duct work. That's that plenum that forces air to the radiator. You can hit it so hard that it'll actually puncture the radiator. Well, these cars, the front of these cars fits right up under the back of the car in front of it. It mashed the hood down onto the radiator is what it did. Greg Biffle getting all he can get. He's got the advantage on Casey Kane. Gotta He's let got the go. lead. Still there, all clear. Now here's a safe bet. Greg Biffle will probably lead the most laps tonight. As he has done many times. <laughs> and Tony Stewart flashes past Kurt Busch for sixth place. Now for more on the Harvick situation, uh, here's Jeff. Mike Darrell was talking about a minute ago about the screen in front of the cars. Also he called it a shaker screen. I want you to see here. This is what we call a shaker screen. It's equipped with the little springs that sit right in front of the radiator. And what it's doing, folks, is you'll notice there's pieces of rubber. It catches the pieces of rubber before it gets a chance to get the radiator. And as it goes around the racetrack, it actually kind of vibrates, shakes us the rubber down in that plenum area that Larry's talking about to keep the radiator clean so that later on in the race, it doesn't run hot. Thanks, well, Jeff. We, Harvick is still on pit road. We talk about how, how bad these tires were. Daryl talked about the sand, and that's what goes up in that radiator opening. That's the reason you have to have that shaker screen there. Yeah, if the tires are wearing, where's the rubber going? It's got to go somewhere. <laughs> that's right. One caution so far, Brian Vickers hitting the inside wall in the backstretch. Steve is with him. Mike, he's out of the care center. He's all right. But, uh, Brian, what happened on the racetrack awfully early to be out here? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen the replay yet. Uh, I, we were coming off turn uh, turn two, and I let Jimmy go. He was going down the back stretch, and we were on the straightaway, and then all of a sudden the car just came around. Uh, we got pretty loose uh, about five or so laps before that. I didn't know if we had maybe a tire going down, but, uh, you know, t I don't think a tire would have caused that down the straightaway. There may have been some contact, but I'd have to look at the replay uh, maybe again. I, uh, I mean, it's pretty funny for the car to just turn around like that down the straightaway. Brian, how bad's the damage? Can you get back in the race? I don't know. It's pretty bad. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, yeah, I tried to drive it back to the pits, and you know, we couldn't get it back in. But I'm sure the GMAC crew will do a good job fixing it. If we can get back out there. We will. We'll try to collect what points we can. Thank you, Brian. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. How about Robbie Gordon in the Moen Fawcett's number seven, biggest mover this race before the caution flag. He had come from 24th to 14th. Robbie is now in the top 10. Yeah, I mean, just within the last couple of laps, he drove right under Jeff Burton in the 31 car about a lap ago. He went right by David Stream in that 40 car. He's looking down the rear bumper of that 24 car now, Jeff Gordon. What's that saying? There's old drivers and bold drivers, but there's no old bold drivers. Well, here there are some. Racetrack, the top 35 and owner points are locked into the show. Robbie Gordon has been there all year long, but because of his finishes, he's flirting with falling out of the top 35. He's in 33rd. Remember, he was there all year long. Last year, he had to qualify on time every race, so they need a good, solid finish just like they did at Talladega. He lets Jimmy Johnson have the line going off into the corner, and Johnson will move up to eighth. Well, you got Cummers, you got Goers. One of the big goers, Elliot Sadler, we'll get to him in a moment. Yeah, here's another, another goer. He is Jeff Gordon, who Matt is backing his way up now to 16th place. Trying to end a long drought, hasn't won in 15 races, which is a long drought for Gordon. Won here six times, but the car was loose on that first run, Mike. They made adjustments. Now he says the car is just way too loose all the way through the corner. He's just trying to hang on to it. Says he just cannot get in the gas at all. No forward bite. Thanks, Matt. Now we mentioned Sadler, 
who has backed up into 36 okay 34th position right now yeah he's in big trouble and watching him he can't he can't uh, he can't keep the car under control at all and uh, he's going to go a lap down here for long Biffle is closing behind these guys right here pretty darn quick Matt well, Mike, the concern early on when Daryl first noticed he was starting to fade on the first run, he thought he might have had a tire going down. Then he thought he might have had an equalized tire. And then the car just basically lost all grip, loose, much like the 24 Gordon, and a little tight in the center. But the adjustments they made have not helped, and the car continues to fall 34th in the running order at this juncture. Daryl, there's what we were talking about. You can drive around this place if your car has a little push in the front end. But when you're loose, that's what's happened to Elliott Sadler and Jeff Gordon. You can't go anywhere. They're going to lap these cars if they don't get the uh, caution to adjust them those things. Last thing you want to worry about here is a car spinning out with you. And uh, you got to have some front. You got to have some control here. And if you don't, you can't go anywhere. And just to follow up on what an equalized tire is, this tire has a tire, then a tire, an inner liner, and they run a differential in pressures. And sometimes they'll leak across, and the pressures between the two will equalize. It causes a bad vibration. On Denny Hamlin, who's fourth, you saw Jimmy Johnson make the pass on Kurt Busch. Johnson is now up to seventh. Steve? After starting 25th, Mike Joy and Jimmy on the last pit stop, the only thing they did besides changing four tires was make an air pressure adjustment. Jimmy Johnson saying his car is very free through the corners and off. Thanks, Steve. Now, Robbie Gordon was in that position, but he has now dropped to ninth place. And let's have a look at the right side of his car. Looks pretty clean from here, All but. Right. Uh, no, let's see. Uh, he has a little Darlington stripe yeah. down a little bit. Dick Bergeron can tell us more. Yeah, they're concerned about that Darlington stripe, Mike, for fear that it may possibly have closed off a brake duct, at least to a degree. Things had been going great for Robbie on the first pit stop. His instruction to the crew, leave it alone. That's how good the car was, and he has consistently been told, race the racetrack. Driving a nice, smooth race, a little bit of contact. Whoa, right out sideways. And a boy. He, he, hung on to he it. knows he's on TV. <laughs> yeah, he does. Dick. Oh, he's doing a great job tonight. Come on, Dick. Nice smooth race and Robbie Gordon in the same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, I heard you doing a piece today earlier, I think, for the speed group. And this racetrack, you can never relax. You can never let your guard down, even if you're out there totally by yourself. Yeah, you, you have got to stay on the wheel here all the time because just like you saw Robbie Gordon, nice and smooth. Whoops! And that's what happens to you. Nice and smooth. You're comfortable, confident. Whoops! <laughs> well, that's one thing about Robbie. He is exciting to watch. How about the answer to our singular virtual crew chief question? Drivers outside of 400 points like Mayfield, Newman, Biffle. Kurt Busch and Carl Edwards. 80% of you say, yes, they can make it. You can win. Jeff Burton's payday at Daytona in our singular virtual crew chief poll. Whoops! <laughs> Right behind Matt Kenseth back there in that uh, black car, Kyle Busch in the five car, sitting there right now in the 11th position, 12th position, right behind his brother Kurt in the two car, and the caution is out for debris on the back stretch. What a huge break for drivers like Jamie McMurray, Dale Jarrett, Michael Waltrip, Sterling Marlin, just about to fall into the clutches of our leader, Greg Biffle, and they would have been a lap down in just Damn. a few laps. Well, that would cut a tire. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a light piece of aluminum that come out of somebody's wheel well. They use pieces like that up inside the wheels to make wheel wells and around the back of the trunk sometime uh, to seal off panels. Dave Blaney and the Cat Dodge will get the free pass. Well, it'll be feeding time on pit road again. Yeah. Four tires, adjustments, full of fuel. It's been about 40 laps since we uh, were on pit road. Let's get a sense of what Dale Jr. is looking for on this pit stop as we listened in. See the dark tint on the top of his shield. Yeah, you also see Mike, he's going to take that off here when it gets a little bit darker. That's uh, taped on there. He'll pull that off when the sun goes down. 
A lot of different things drivers use here. Some drivers actually started to race in dark sunglasses. And we'll take those off. Steve Burns. Mike Denny Hamlin just telling Mike Ford, the crew chief, my car is looser off. It seems like I've got more steering wheel for a longer period of time. I'm better on entrance, but I'm struggling with forward bite off. They're going to take half a pound out of both rear tires and drop the track bar again, Dick. Well, on the first pit stop, Clint Boyer said his car was loose, but leave it alone. It's still loose, and now he's asked the crew to tighten it up a little bit. Wants to be able to hang on to it here in Darlington. Doesn't want the wall, Matt. Now the nine of Casey K making big headway on that Dodge. Remember the previous stop, the car was way loose. Air pressure just didn't help, but he wants a little more. The car was good off turn two. The 16 service already complete, 14.4 seconds. He was tight, needed to have the stagger. The air pressure opened up from the left side to the right side. They went down on the air pressure on the left side tires. Look like to me the real winner on pit road, Robbie Riser, the killer bees, Matt Kenseth, you see right there, picked up two spots as well as Kurt Busch in that two group. Now this would be the time on pit road, including the pit stop. You see right there, Casey Kane and Matt Kenseth, the 17 car. And trust me, all of these will be four tires. There'll be no two tire changes. Now look at that cloud cover. The sun has been behind it, but there's a big gap that the sun will get right in these fellas eyes for another half hour or so. Your leader, Casey Kane, Ryan Newman, Denny Hamlin, Jimmy Johnson, your top five, Boyer, Kenseth, Robbie Gordon, the Bush brothers, your top ten. Green flag. See the 29 car, Kevin Hart, there, second car on the inside. He's 12 laps down, having to make repairs to that radiator. Came in here fifth in the points. Now back in the day, 12 laps down, you'd have still been in the top 10. Biffle steps out with the lead. Let's have a look at what happened to Harvick, Matt. When the team pulled the radiator, Mike, out of the car, you can see the damage to the radiator. Now what might have caused that, do you ask? Well, how about this chunk of pavement from the old lady in black? You see it fits perfectly right in the grill. <laughs> That's what the team found when they pulled the radiator out. Hey, Matt, did they, do you know if they have that catch screen in there like Jeff Hammond They was had a shaker screen in there like most teams up and down pit road, Larry Mack. Okay. Hey, uh, uh, take that over and give it to Jeff. He's collecting that stuff. <laughs> His memorabilia collection. Well, that brings up another interesting question. Where did that come from? Because so that's pretty go big. There, there. That was big. Seven laps complete. Biffle in front of Kane now by one second. Car kind of goes through three stages here. I love my car. I like my car. I hate my car. What'd you do to my car? Yeah. Sounds like most leases I've had. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching this car right here. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to go by Mark Martin in the six on the high side. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to get in the top ten. Looks like he's going to complete the pass. Headed off into turn one. Clear, clear. 78 laps complete, 289 to go in the Dodge Charger 500. Clear top off two, you're clear high right there. Next right on by Clint Boyer in the yeah, 07. Three cars in front of you, he runs the top and he throws. Casey Kane led the first 34 laps, gave way to Greg Biffle. Dave Blaney led one lap. 
but it's been all Biffle since he went to the front. Only two caution flags, and the only cars out of the race, Derek Cope after 11 laps, and Brian Vickers after a hard hit with the wall is also in the garage. Ryan Newman in third. Denny Hamlin, the fourth place car. And here comes Jimmy Johnson challenging for fourth on the inside and takes the spot. Steve? And Mike, he really likes his race car right now. When the caution came out, he told crew chief Chad Canals, I'm killing them getting into turns one and three, but it's through the middle that they're getting me. Let's not make any adjustments. Chad came back and said, we're going to make a small air pressure adjustment. We need to keep up with this racetrack. Kyle Busch going past Tony Stewart. And that is for 14. Yeah, Tony, uh, he's let a couple of guys go. The one there of Truex and now the five that caught him off at two over there kind of in a precarious place. The 49 cars a lap down broke Tony's momentum there a couple of times and uh, lost some spots because of it. You know, we've been talking about rookies. You just mentioned Mark Truex Jr. in that one car. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s teammate started back in the 39th position. He has moved up to the 13th position after 81 laps. So he's getting a hold of this place right now. Hey, who else's car is much better right in front of him is Jeff Gordon's after the stop. They pass by the 49 that's a lap down. Kevin LePage is the new driver for BAM Racing. Brent Sherman left the team gave them his notice after they decided he would not be in the car at Richmond and Darlington so Sherman is going to take his sponsorship and race in Arca and perhaps get back to Nextel Cup later in the season. You know who else has made a nice recovery Carl Edwards in this 99 car remember when the race started he started in seventh position fell back to the point that he almost was about to get lapped back in 40th spot. He got that lucky caution on lap 29. They made adjustments. Now he's headed back toward the top 15 in 16th spot. Now he was as far back as 40th and just about to go a lap down when that cause first caution came out. Kyle Busch makes the pass on Martin Truex. I don't know if you noticed it or not. It's pretty subtle. But did you notice how when he jumped out from behind Truex, the car kind of wiggled? That's what happened to Vickers over on the back over there. He jumped out from behind Jimmy Johnson, and the car just got out from under him. Tony Stewart riding, you might say, Matt, there in uh, 15th spot. This is Darlington, but if you're Tony Stewart, it feels more like he's on the dirt at Eldora. He said he's chasing the car all the way through the corner, needs side bite, needs forward bite. He says his arms are already half worn out, elbows up. He's really working the, the wheel, just needs a lot of grip, and that's something that he hasn't had most of tonight. Yesterday in practice, the car was tight, has been loose most of tonight's race. That's classic. You fight tight all during practice, so the crew chief says, I'll fix that. And now he's loose. Here's the Freightliner Dodge from LePage. It has the same look, possibly Kevin Harvick woes. Uh, looks like he's running warm there in the 49 car. Well, he had a little different problem, Larry. Well, he's, here. he's been getting passed by a lot of cars. That's off a of turn two. This is, this is the time when Tony Stewart lost his momentum. You see the water coming out of the overflow right there, Larry. So looks like there might be de debris on the on the grill. It definitely looked like that grill was almost blocked up solid, but add another one to our Darlington strike count. Greg Biffle now in front of Casey Kane by two seconds. Two quick caution flags early, still 281 laps to go at the Lady in Black. Jeff Green has gone around. Looked like there were two cars involved. Yeah, he got a little bump from somebody. I'm not sure who it was. I think, you know, I think you're just exactly right. I think he's going to be okay. Third caution of the night. Jeff, you caught up here. What can I do? Lap 95. Looks like he was maybe pedaling at a tad here. And, uh, ooh. Elliot Sadler in the 38 car. I'd say Elliot's just maybe a little bit frustrated with the whole evening. And Jeff Green has not had a great evening. We have got a report that he had lost third gear, which certainly would hurt him leaving the pits and on restarts in the transmission. That's about that place where that magic mark is over there, where I always say, you know, if they put an X on the wall so I know where to turn left. Is that turn 2A or is that 2B? <laughs> it's 2B. Or not 2B in yes, the case in of this Jeff case. Green. He's, all his flaps are up, Larry. Look at that. You hear him out of the throttle.
Guys, we didn't hit anything, didn't get hit. Come on, Jeff. Come on, get Somebody, your full tires. So Elliot Sadler gets into Jeff Green, and the caution is out for the third time tonight. Casey Mears Ooh. will get the free pass. Well, that didn't sound good, Larry. Well, remember, I just had mentioned uh, he's gear got boxes. gearbox problems in third gear. Baby, rattling. Well, she's been 25 laps. Pit road will be busy again. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Exactly. Four tires. And maybe an adjustment that will help this race car. It's one of those tracks that doesn't necessarily change that much over the course of the race, but you're just always hunting something to give the car more grip, whether it's air pressure, wedge, track bar adjustment, anything that'll just help the grip of the race car. I was telling some of the young drivers yesterday, I said, look, your car will never be perfect. You're just trying to make your car better than everybody else's, because no, you're just going to be the best of what's out there, Steve. Hey, DW, Jimmy Johnson says my car is tightening up just a little bit off of turn two. They're going to go up on the Panar bar and make an air pressure adjustment, Dick. On the first stop, Matt Kenseth was a little bit hot. They pulled tape. He's up to 220 degrees. They're going to leave the nose alone under the real good clean of the, wind, of the radiator grill. Matt. Defending winner, the 16 Biffle on the top side. No changes. Meanwhile, the car in the middle, you can already see they've completed the chassis adjustments for Kane. He felt like Biffle was beating him on entry into three and off down the hill off turn two. The nine is down and away. Great stop again by the Dodge Boys. All right, just remember the last stop, Matt Kenseth, Robbie Riser, the 17 car, they gained two spots. They do it again right there. Kyle Busch in the five, great stops last week at Richmond. That group gains three spots on pit road. Here's the time, including the stop. Casey Kane, Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth, that's four spots he's picked up on the last two pit stops. Problem for Clint Boyer who ran a good part of this race so far up in the top five. Away gets one of those rear tires. He's gonna have his work cut up firm now. Tail in the longest line. And came out in 11th. Lost four spots. You see on our Fox tracks, that's pretty much pace car speed, caution lap speed, right about 50 miles per hour. Green flag. Now Kevin Harvick uh, may just give Mr. Kane a little bit of a problem here. He's trying to get one of his 12 laps back after having that radiator problem. Man, that's hard to do right there. You only do that on new tires. Run off a turn two side by side like that. Well, he was 13 laps down, now 12, and now if he gets past Kane, it'll be 11. Whoa, if he doesn't wreck Kane. Man, what a wad. This is about 11th through about 20th right here, riding with Jeff Burton in the 31 car. He's in the 16th position now. He's going to drive to the inside of Tony Stewart in the 20 car. Tony will prevail. You could hear him really have the feather of the throttle, just a little bit of give and take right there on Jeff Burton's part, getting off into turn one. Now, despite that spin, Jeff Green pitted with the leaders, and he has stayed on the lead lap. Well, I tell you, guys, right now, though, I am really impressed with the job every driver is doing. You hear that giving and taking, working the throttle, giving each other some room, being really nice to each other, Larry. I don't know if I can last for 367 laps or not, but. It's working right now. How about that rookie Denny Hamlin in fifth place, Steve? Doing a good job, Mike Joy. Uh, he just told the team prior to the caution, I can't turn the car in the middle of one and two, so they added air to the left side tires, took a little bit out of the right front, and made a track bar adjustment. That'll be the game on pit road, pretty much, is adjustments, major adjustments. Every pit stop, even for the cars up at the front of the pack. Yeah, it adds to the stripe count. Ah, let's. So be, don't be too hasty here. That's one of those. That's one of those lightly, slightly, and politely little rubs right there. Well, just can't do that all nightly. That's the problem. Got a lot battle for the lead. lead here. Greg Biffle, 16, gets passed by Casey Kane on the nine. On the high side, Kane takes the point back. Looks like Biffle wanted to try that crossover move, DW. Got to time it right. 
Guy in front of you has got to be really out of the gas for a period of time for you to make that work. Now Biffle drives back by Casey Kane on the high side, getting into turn three, but they better look in their rear view mirror. Matt Kenseth in that 17 car, he is a coming. Remember Matt started back in the 31st position, 104 laps into this thing, here he is looking down the pipe at those top two. Another cat having a pretty solid night right there. We just saw him, Ryan Newman in that 12 car, started on the outside of the front row, finally put some of his bad luck behind him last week at Richmond, finished eighth. And I talked to Roger Penske, his car owner, right now, Daryl, and you'll relate to this, you've been talking about this. They're not worried about the top 10 in points. Right now he's 23rd in points, 205 points behind 10th. They're looking at the 400 point window number. And right now he's 548 points behind our leader as we are right now. He just needs another good solid finish. Top fives, top tens. Yeah, once you get that far, by, uh, that far behind, it's about all you can do is hope to get within the 400 point window and that hadn't happened yet in the two years that we've had the chase. When the circuit leaves Richmond in September, the top 10 in points, plus anyone within 400 points of the leader in the standings will compete in the chase for the next Dell Cup. 400 points was chosen because no one's won the championship in recent memory from further back than that with 10 races to go. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the eight car in the eighth position right now. 13th place, Bobby Labonte in the Cheerios 43. Jeff Burton. Linda Petty this morning, Richard Petty's wife, talked about her life as a racing wife, as did Stevie Waltrip, to a, a group organized by Motor Racing Outreach in a T sponsored by Lisa France Kennedy. And uh, it was pretty neat as Matt Kenseth makes the pass on Casey Kane for second. Linda talked about how the biggest thing in their first years of racing was when she finally got a station wagon and could haul the whole brood of petty kids from track to track. But sometimes they'd go race on the northern swing and without phones in the motel rooms and news being scarce on the TV or radio, sometimes it'll be a day or two before she found out what happened from race to race. No certainly cell difference. phones. Nope. Carl Edwards in the 99 car, he just goes by Bobby Labonte in the 43 car, that's for the 14th position, and there's David Strimmy, remember, qualified up in the top five in the 40 car. He continues to hang in there. Fifth place, point leader Jimmy Johnson. But you know, Mike, you're talking about that, and, and things were so different 25, 30 years ago everywhere in the whole world I guess but in racing particularly some of these younger kids that uh, they look at you and shake your head like you got to be making that up it's like you're, when your dad used to tell you walk to school you know hey I walked to school <laughs> barefooted no <laughs> there's a battle between a couple of teammates and a couple of rookies David Streamy in the 40 car Reed Sorensen in the 41 car this is a battle for 17th the nine car starting to fade just a little bit. Casey Kane, and remember Matt Kenseth in the 17 just went by him a few laps ago. Now Ryan Newman in the 12 has pulled up to him. I tell you, these cars beat all I've ever seen. This track does. You just It's like somebody flips a switch. You got a perfectly good race car, you're happy with it, and all of a sudden in one lap, you say, what in the world's going on? My car's going to junk. 110 down, 257 to go, and Greg Biffle is the man in Darlington, South Carolina. His National Guard Ford has now been out in front for 68 laps. You gotta be willing to fight for it. 13 laps down with a broken radiator. They replaced it, and now he's coming back to pit road. Take the right front rotor and everything. Make sure nothing's getting ready to fly apart, because it's big. Tough night for Harvick. So I tell you, he got a really bad vibration over there. He thinks he's got a broken rotor or something. And the last thing you want to do, 13 laps down, is stay out there and have something go amiss and hit that wall. Seventh place, Casey Kane, Kurt Busch. Biffle out front by three tenths of a second. Kenseth in second at this very unique egg-shaped oval. NASCAR's first paved super speedway. 
requires a delicate and different approach. Here is Jeff Hammond with tonight's State Farm Safety Report. When you come to Darlington, you know you're going to get a Darlington strike. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. So all of these teams have learned the best way to protect your race car is really simply go by your favorite local lumber supply place and purchase a 4 before. Attach it to the outside of your roll cage, between the roll cage and the sheet metal of the race car. And what this will do, it will allow you to go up there, make contact with the outside wall, earn your Darlington strike, but yet protect the wheels that's what it's designed to do if you notice this four before it when you hit the wall it doesn't let the wall really make hard contact with your tires especially the rear tires you don't want to knock the alignment of the rear end out or as well as the front end and this simple four before will allow you to do that mike thanks jeff wooden car i told the story yesterday though uh a couple of years ago, there you see we're up to 12 on our Darlington stripes, but sometimes you can't find boards and you'll just put tubing there. A couple of years ago over in the bush garage, one of the children's cars, they were trying to find some bars to weld. I think it was either Johnny Sauter or Kevin Harvick's car. They couldn't find any. One of their neighbor's jack handle just happened to be in the jack behind them. They took the jack handle out, welded it in there. And uh, the next morning, the guys were minus the jack handle. I knew where it was though. Here's Dale Jr. about to be a top five car as he draws a bead on Denny Hamlin. Another mover is Carl Edwards, who just passed Tony Stewart to move up to 14th place, Steve. Mike, he's had some anxious moments. Now you see the 99 in front of the 20 a few laps ago. It was the other way around. Now he had something, Carl Edwards had something on the grill. His spotter, Bobby Hudson, went to Mark Robertson, the spotter on the 20 car of Tony Stewart, and said, hey, have Tony slow down so Carl can pull up. It created, they got close enough to where it created a vacuum and pulled whatever debris was on the grill of the 99. Now, 21-year-old Kyle Busch, you see him there in the five car. He's having problems getting on the throttle. He said, especially on turn two, he started 29th. You see he's up into the 10th, or currently 13th. His problem is having trouble getting back on the gas, but the good news is his pit crew has picked up a bunch of spots. On lap 28, they gained three positions. Lap 69, two spots, and most recently on lap 95, they gained three positions. Thanks, Steve. Now here is Carl Edwards, and you see the grill opening above the word fusion. It's clean now, and here's what it looked like before. Well, that's Stewart right behind him. They were coming down the front here, and all of a sudden, Carl just stopped almost, and I thought, what in the world? Something happened to his car, but uh, he let Tony go by, and then he got up behind Tony and uh, got that little piece of debris blown off of there. And, Darrell, the thing I noticed, there's not a lot of opening there to begin with. Cutting it pretty close, looks to me like. New leader Matt Kenseth has repassed Greg Biffle. Kenseth led one lap earlier when Biffle allowed him to go by and pick up five bonus points. And then Biffle retook the lead. But here's the pass. That's the cleanest way to make a pass here. All this straightaway. Pull down, let the guy go, and uh, follow him. They start racing each other. Ryan Newman in the 12, he'd be right there with them. And Robbie Gordon in the 7, he goes by Casey Kane in the 9. Whoa. That's another position. Hang on to her, Robbie. Robbie's trying to add to our Darlington strike number. You keep an eye on that number 7 car. You will not be bored. Larry, he's trying to add to our debris problems. <laughs> <laughs> I know Casey Kane in the nine would love to add to our number of cautions as far as another one coming out where he can get the pit road and get some adjustments on that thing. Matt Kenseth, your new leader with 238 laps to go in the Dodge Charger 500 on Fox. All the way down to Homestead Miami Speedway, but I think we're going to be watching this rookie of the year battle, the Robestus rookie of the year battle between these five or six guys. They keep flipping back and forth after finishing second last week. Denny Hamlin took the lead back from Clint Boyer in the lead in the rookie points. Uh, hello, Larry. Here comes uh, that 48 car. He's just been clicking them off here, and he's up here in third place, and he's caught 
Ryan Newman and uh, Matt Kins is not too far ahead of him right now. Well, and I know they didn't get the qualifying run in that they felt like they should get. They qualified back in the 25th position, but I know watching them in final practice last night, talking to Chad Canals, pretty happy. He swept the races here in 2004. Seven starts here, six top 10 finishes. That's tough to do at this place. And they're trying to rebound from a pretty rough Richmond last week. Yeah, but golly, did they rebound at Richmond? Yeah, to come back 12th yeah. after being in. I mean, they ran 30th all night long, a lap down. Come back there at the end of the night, got them a 12th place finish, maintained a point lead. Here he comes on Jeff Green, the Best Buy Chevy. Green spun earlier, stayed on the lead lap, but has now gone one lap down. Rookies, Martin Truex, Reed Sorensen. Whoa, hang on to her, Martin. Martin's giving him a little wave. With Thanks, three in Steve. front of you, really check up off a of two over there where you've been having trouble. That's a 21st place. And here's Tony Raines in the Texas Instruments DLP. HDTV Chevy working his way up through the field. Whoa. Man, oh, listen, him oh, spinning rear tires. Better, so keep doing that. Yeah, you saw he was one of our biggest movers because he started back in the 42nd position, still hanging out on the league lap in 23rd right now. Tell you, Tony Raines, Tony Raines was someone that uh, we looked at to drive our Toyota trucks in the truck series, but he wanted to be in cup. Yep. He said, I'm going to hold out for a good cup ride, and by golly, he's got it, and he's doing a great job. Listen at working that throttle, though, and when he finally does get it wide open, listen to rear tires trying to spin. Dale, you drive it, I think, as much with the throttle as you do the steering wheel here. Hey, was that Robbie Gordon going by? Look at that, going by Mark Martin. It coming. So Robbie's up to eighth. Mark slips to ninth. Steve. Mark started 17th and just a lap or two ago. Mike, he told crew chief Pat Trison that his car is, for the most part, very good. He feels like that right rear is a little worn out. Well, we're getting within about 20 laps of what would be green flag stops. They were on pit road back at lap 96. Right between 160 and 165, I guarantee you everybody's screaming about their tires and grip. Looks like somebody's on pit road now. Is that the 26 car? A little early. We'll check on that when we come back. Matt Kenseth leads by one and a half seconds in the Dodge Charger 500 on Fox. The Dodge Charger 500 on Fox is sponsored by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. The caution is out of Darlington for the fourth time tonight. This time it's our defending Nextel Cup champion. Tony Stewart spins at turn number four. It's all by itself. Let's see what he does here. Car just comes around with him right there in the middle of turn four. He started to race off in pretty good shape, but we've been getting reports he's been not very happy with that car. No, you know he complained about a car yesterday, and uh, I, I think Larry is just getting close to pit stop time. So what happened to Dale Jarrett here? He goes up. He smacks the fence, and it wasn't but just a few laps here uh, later that Tony spins. I think these guys are out of cars. Now, the car that was on pit road when we went to break was the 49 of Kevin LePage, was not the 26. Stewart stays on the lead lap after that spin, and everyone will pit, Steve. Mike, just before the caution flag flew, Jimmy Johnson told Chad Canals, I was getting a little tight getting into three, whereas I was killing them there before. They'll make a panard bar adjustment and air pressure, Dick. Matt Kenseth says his car is a little bit free of very minor air pressure adjustment. That's it. This crew has been lightning fast all night long. Matty. Ryan Newman working on his second top five in the last 18 races. Solid stop going on so far. Man, a few words said, I really don't have many complaints about the car. It's a small air pressure adjustment, 14.6 seconds for Newman. You see the race off pit road. It's going to be hard for the 17 to gain any spots now because he's leading. But Jimmy Johnson, Chad Canals, the 48 group, they gain a spot as well as Denny Hamlin. There you see Ryan Newman loses two spots. Carl Edward loses one. And Casey Kane gains four spots. There's the times on pit road, including the pit stop. Nice job by Robbie Gordon's crew to redeem themselves after that last stop. This time they got in and got out in the same position, seventh. Got to tell those pit crews like you tell the driver. Don't give me 110%, just give me 100. 
under caution for the fourth time tonight. You're watching NASCAR. Side tires, it gave him four tires. Boy, his teammate is playing slice and dice with the traffic. That's Yaley in the 18 and Stewart right behind him. Two more of the Gibbs cars linked up at 21st place. Yeah, I think probably Tony told the Zippadelli after that to spin. I told you this thing wasn't very good, now fix it. Looks like they did, at least for a little while. Gonna make the pass here on his teammate. Oh, if you can just keep it that good all night. Truex also gets past Jaylee. Saturday baseball on Fox, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. But Daryl, they're all on new tires. It, it takes a few laps for these guys to be able to tell if the adjustments they made are an improvement. Well, look at Jeff, laps on the excuse me, look at Jeff Gordon, though. He can tell he just shot past Scott Riggs and busted out of a big pack of traffic. Matt? Steve Latard's crew chief continues to try to stay ahead of the racetrack, continues to try to tighten Gordon up. Gordon, like just about everybody else, including Tony Stewart. Now, that run was about 50 laps, the longest we've had green flag run tonight. The cars all got extremely loose at the end, and that's what all the drivers in my area, like Biffle, were complaining about. The car was just extremely loose, hence Stewart spinning out. Yeah, but Matt, you could hear them. I mean, like the 96 car, we were riding with him. Spinning the rear tires, you're just going to wear them out, and then the car gets really bad loose. A little battle for fourth here heating up. Greg Biffle in the 16 car. Ryan Newman in the 12 has pretty much been in the top five all night long, closing in on Greg Biffle. Time for our next singular virtual crew chief question. Can Biffle go back to back in Nextel Cup? Text the word crew to 191 on your singular wireless phone or log on to foxsports.com slash singular. And you'll also be entered to win Jeff Burton's payday at the July race in Daytona. Biffle has led 82 laps so far tonight. Currently, he's in four. Let's have a look back at his win here one year ago. Greg Biffle for racetrack. He's got Gordon. Made it look easy. Greg Biffle leads 176 laps and wins the Dodge Charger 500. And that's his only win here, but I, he's always been so competitive here. I go back a couple years ago. He pretty much had him spanked in the Southern 500 in the fall a couple years ago, and the car bought him out till it just finally drug the ring gear off the flywheel. And that was the race where he and Doug Rickard, his current crew chief, hooked up, and uh, it was obvious from that race, first time they raced together, they were going to be something special as a team. Greg Biffle makes the pass on Hamlin for third. Hamlin's teammate, Tony Stewart, broke through one pack of traffic, but now goes to the bottom. That's Scott Riggs up top. Now he's going to fill the hole on the outside of Mayfield. Got to be careful right there coming off the corner. Right? Yep. Closes up fast. Yaley in his draft makes the pass. How about Kurt Busch and that pack he's with? Boy, that is, that's a knot of traffic right there. Here comes Stremme on the bottom, who qualified fourth in the 40, trying to work his way back up through. Things get a little dicey. This, this, this is not so polite a bunch as we saw earlier. Oh, well, we know from our past experience, as the night wears on, patience run thin. Now let's move up to about sixth place. Where Dale Earnhardt Jr. is four seconds off the lead, Matt. Well, Dale Jr., driver eight, currently running in the sixth spot, trying to do something for the first time in his next L Cup career that he did back in Bush, and that's when back to back races. Jr. having a very solid night. But like he mentioned in the pre race show to Chris Myers and to Jeff Hammond, he hasn't been feeling well most of this weekend. I, uh, I think I'm all right. But, uh, if you know anybody my size, I might be slamming my armpit here tonight, but I think I'm gonna make it. I think I'll be all right, just in case, so. And you can hear Junior saying basically to Tony Junior, his crew chief, 
in case someone falls out my size, you might want to keep them around just in case I need a relief driver. Junior told the team earlier, just keep the car tight. I want to retain a little bit of tightness in the car as much as possible. And DW talked about that earlier. You want the car to be as tight around here versus being on the loose side. Right now, the only driver out of the race is Derek Cope. Cope is much stockier than Junior and likely would not fit in Junior's seat. And you know, we're only about 20 laps away from halfway. That's a little unusual that we only have one driver that is not out on the racetrack right now. Well, I know Junebug pretty well. And it did have to get pretty bad for him to get out of that race car, particularly the way it's running right now. There you go, with as good as it is. Even Brian Vickers, who crashed to bring out the first caution of the night, got his car repaired. And he's back on track, although 114 laps down. Matt Kenseth out front by half a second. Jimmy Johnson knocking that margin down by about a tenth of a second a lap with 200 laps to go. Greg Biffle 1.8 seconds off the lead. Denny Hamlin three and a half back. There they all are with Newman and Junior five seconds. And the other thing, Kenseth. Mike, you look at the where Dale Jr. is running, kind of running all in a, it, all by himself. There's nobody in front of him, really. There's nobody behind him. Uh, he can sort of, for Darlington, be a little bit relaxed. Behind him, Robbie Gordon in seventh, Jeff Gordon eighth, Jeff Burton in ninth, and Carl Edwards in tenth. 93 laps to go. Kevin Harvick came in red hot, fifth in points, but the track too tough to tame. Jeff Hammond tamed his car in a hurry. Yeah, the track itself basically came up, put a hole in the radiator, made those guys go behind pit wall, make repairs, and right now it's been a long night for him. He's 16 laps down. Jimmy Johnson, points leader coming in, started 25th. Yeah, but he went cha cha charging up toward the front, and right now he's running second behind Matt Kent. It's a good recovery by these guys. Tony Stewart was second in points here, having trouble. This little spin out pushed him back to 24th, back on lap 115. Yeah, but Chris, he's already recovered. He's back up to 20th, and Tony's guys are back on track. They'll keep working on his race car. He'll be better by the end of the night. This has been a Visa race break. No matter what it takes, life takes Visa. And moments ago, Matt Yoakum following up on Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's trying to win back-to-back -back races, currently running six. Now, after winning Richmond, he said, hey, I feel great. It's great to be back at victory lane. Must be tough for a guy who told us early in the day, little flu, little stomach uh, type, no problem, for him to hang in there, especially on this track. Yeah, it's a tough racetrack. I talked again to his crew chief early on, or late Friday afternoon, and he said he just wasn't feeling very well. They're trying to keep him uh, in his bus, let him get some rest and everything, get a lot of fluids into him. Well, he's already reported right now, even though we're just now getting up to halfway, guys, you may want to start looking for a relief driver. And at DW, you know, sometimes these long runs are good for a driver because he stays focused as he's seen him go by. Uh, Denny Hamill right now moving up to fifth place. But other times, you'd like to see a caution every now and then so you can catch your breath. Yeah, well, what really makes a difference, Jeff, is what uh, Dale Jr.'s got right now. It's a pretty good driving race car. He's not having to put out any extra effort here to kind of maintain pace. It gives him a chance to really just sit there and put some laps down and uh, get closer to the end. Closer to the end he gets, the better off he'll be. You know, the, the, the more likely he'll make it. When the car is good, you feel good. No matter how bad you feel. Yeah, there's no question about that. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you, you're not going to get out of a good race car. You might decide, hey, this thing's pitiful and I need out of it, but not a good race car. Matt Kenseth trying to win his first here at Darlington. There are 20 victories represented in this field, including six by Jeff Gordon and three by Dale Jarrett. Matt Kenseth is trying to go to victory lane at America's oldest NASCAR Super Speedway for the first time. Dick? In case you have just joined us, Matt Kenseth started in the 31st position. He practiced well, but complained that he time trialed badly. He said after his qualifying run, I hate it here. I never qualify well here. Well, he did manage to motor up front with a lot of help from his pit crew that has either held his position or gained spots on every pit stop. And let us remind you that to this event tonight, in Matt Kenseth's entire career, his average starting position for all of his wins is 22nd. He usually wins from the back of the pack. That's a good point. And Larry, his Robbie Reiser-led team is looking like the team of his championship year. 
The car comes in. It comes out having gained positions and running better than he was in the last green run. Well, remember last year, you know, it took them, you know, almost a third of the season before they even got a top five finish. But this year, we had no rule changes essentially from last year, with the exception of the Ford Fusion nose and tail, and they picked up right where they left off. But I'm going to tell you, we need to update. Chris Myers was talking about Tony Stewart's spin back on lap 149. I've been watching Tony. He's just lost two or three positions over the last few laps. In fact, Jeremy Mayfield in the 19 is locked in on him. But the biggest problem, our leader Matt Kenseth right now is only about seven seconds behind him, which is less than the distance of the back straightaway from lapping him. The car's bouncing in the back a lot, Larry, and it just it hits the bumps and it really snaps loose on him. It's got to be a handful to hang on to. What are they saying, Matt? DW, he said the car is still free. In fact, he said, the next pit stop, I want you to bury the track bar. Because then when you take it all the way down to the bottom, I want you to take it down six more rounds. That's just how free, how loose this car is. He's just chasing it still all over the racetrack. And Darrell, I've got to believe when Tony Stewart is complaining about a car being that loose, you better get pretty aggressive with the changes on it because it must be all but wrecking. It's kind of shocking, really, Larry, because you think about Week in and week out, that is the one race car consistently that has no handling issues. They're usually spot on. So for him to miss the setup here tonight is really surprising. But you know what, Daryl? Where else do we run that the setup relates to this place here? Yeah, probably nowhere. Nowhere, exactly. It's one of a kind. Michael Waltrip off the pace in the well, Napa Dodge. Starting to come again. I thought I heard that car really running flat a couple of times by here lately as if it had lost a cylinder or broken a hitter pipe or something. Of course, Michael's problems would continue. Remember, he's out of the top 35 in owner points as he has yeah, been the last two weeks. Speed up, but... So if things don't turn around, that means he'll have to go to Charlotte, to Lowe's Motor Speedway in a couple of weeks and qualify on time again. And how much did he make this race by? About three, one thousand? Just barely. Just barely sneaked into this one. So. Uh, yeah, we don't uh, we need to do a little work here. Halfway in the Dodge Charger 500. Let's have a look back to fourth place. Five seconds off the lead, Ryan Newman. In the Alltel Dodge. Same front row here as last year, Kane and Newman. One third of all Darlington Cup races have been won from the front row. And Newman, of course, sitting there running in the fourth position. He has not had a top five finish since he finished third in the Daytona 500 back in February. Jeff Burton up in the top 10. He is twice a winner here. He won both 1997 races at this track. He's the man 11th in points right now, only 11 points out of 10th coming into this race. And he would move into 10th the way they're running right now because Casey Mears uh, is toward the tail end of the lead lap. Now here's Mr. Consistency when it comes to Darlington. Bobby Labonte has a win here and uh, has, a, I don't know, Larry, you've got the numbers. How many top fives and tens? Well, the biggest thing, Daryl, and you know by racing here how tough this is, 20 consecutive races here without a DNF. He's been running at the, at the end of 20 consecutive races. Put me on the spot, didn't you? Labonte in 11th place. Michael Walter going on second lap down <laughs> to Matt Kenseth, who leads Jimmy Johnson by six tenths of a second in the Dodge Charger 500 on Fox. <laughs> Laps. All right, Dick Bergeron, why did Matt Kenseth pull over and let Jimmy Johnson go? Because he was being polite and the car is locked tight. He knew he couldn't hold Johnson off, so just let him go. I mean, that is the smart way to do it at this point in the event. He's talked about the need to pull a spring rubber on the next pit stop. And Dick, they, he did it on the straightaway where you lose the least amount of time because his teammate Greg Mifflin was back there in third place in the 16 car. He needs to take his spring rubber out and give it to Carl Edwards. <laughs> Teammates make a little chop swap here. Yeah, Carl Edwards, you can hear the exasperation as he talks about his handling. Still too tight, buddy. Uh, too tight in the center of one and two. We got a spring rubber hanging on the right rear. 
So there you have it. If you can get it from Matt, just get on up there. Steve? Hey, Mike, didn't you say early in the race, Edwards had dropped all the way to 40th, I think it was? Correct. Well, let's remember, early in the race, he said this car was so tight, it was undrivable. The end of the most recent radio communication we heard was, he said that the car is starting to come around the longer we run, and he's inside the top 10. And what he meant, Steve, Daryl, Mike, about do you have a spring rubber hanging on the right rear spring, is they can put a little piece of rubber in that coil spring, stiffen the rate, make the car turn. But rather than a crew member have to carry one over there to put it in, they have one actually attached to the spring. It'll be hanging just right here. Now, this is one coming out, but that's about the size rubber they will, will put in there. But it'll just be hanging on the spring where they can just pop it up in there just like that. It increases the rate of that spring will help the car turn from the center off. Yeah, it's tie wrap there. They drill a couple little holes in the uh, spring rubber, tie wrap it to the spring. And then if they need it, they just pop it in the in the uh, between the coils and away you go. DW loves the spring rubber anim animation. Just stay away from that battery problem. Speaking, track bar I'm good with. Track speaking bar. of which, uh, Michael Waltrip, who has fallen two laps down, has changed ignition boxes, switched over to the spare. He's now gone four laps down, and hopefully that'll get his Dodge running a little better. And we did talk about only one car being out of the race. I, I think we need to mention again, Brian Vickers, who was involved in that very first caution back on lap 27. They repaired that car. He's back out there in 42nd position, 115 laps down. Yeah, and no, Michael just went by, and I don't think they're going to have changed more than the ignition box. Well, let's see how our at-home experts have ruled on Greg Biffle and uh, whether he can go back-to-back -back here at Darlington. Remember, when you participate in Singular Virtual Crew Chief, you're automatically entered to win Jeff Burton's payday for the July race in Daytona. Survey says, uh-uh. Well, you know, they've been following us, uh, the saga of Greg Biffle, I guess, like we have. For the most part of this year, we've seen him dominate race after race after race, like he's doing tonight. But uh, still, it's just hard to hard to knock off those wins. Now, Biffle got his first top five of the year last week. Last year, after ten races, he already had three wins. And there, you see, he will gain in the standings. That's his uh, point next up point position. Yeah. And needs to. And it's no lack of performance. I mean, the car is performing, and Greg's doing a great job, but they have had rotten luck. All I know is we got 167 laps to go, which is a long way and a lot of pit stops. So a lot of things can happen in the midst of all that. Oh, Junebug's car got a little loose off four right there. I've seen that several times tonight. But I think. I think he is closing on Biffle a little bit. Uh, their lap times. Well, pretty close, Matt. Well, Mike Jr. running in the fourth spot, working on uh, a career best finish here. If he can just start working his way to the front. Now, if you're concerned about Jr. and his health, he hasn't really said much. But when Steve Meal told Dale Jr. that we were at the halfway point, Jr. said, cool. The car's still neutral. But that cool was a much relieved cool. Of, you can see the car is getting better. Like Daryl said, it's much easier to drive if you're sick, a car that's running well, than a car that's struggling. Good job, man. You know these guys' foot's bigger than their brains up here. <laughs> <laughs> that's Steve Meal. <laughs> do, do we have a driving shoe animation to go with that? <laughs> I don't know about that one, but, but how about for more on spring rubbers? Let's go down to Jeff Hammond at the Hollywood Hotel. I'm sure he's got one tied up somewhere. <laughs> That's exactly right, Daryl. I went down to my little cutaway car, my Fusion Cutaway Car Center, brought up the spring for everybody to so that you can understand. You saw the animation of taking the spring rubber out. This is what DW's been talking about. You hang a rubber, spring rubber, on the rear spring. That way, when you come in, you can easily push it in. Now you've got a much stiffer rear spring, and that's exactly what these drivers are talking about. If we need to stiffen that rear spring up, do I have a piece of rubber hanging back there? This is what they're wanting you to do next time in. Tighten that car up, make that spring stiffer. Yeah, and that rubber can vary in hardness, which will make the rate even higher, or a real soft one, 15 pounds, and they get stiffer all the way up to probably 35 pounds. 
Well, all I know in about 10, 15 laps, Wally Brown, crew chief for Carl Edwards, uh, Robbie Reiser, crew chief for Matt Kenseth, they're going to have to make a decision whether they want to do something with spring rubber because that's about how long before green flag pit stops. This man may have a decision to make. Bobby Labonte in the Cheerios Dodge may, I think he may have a tire going soft. It looks pretty good right there. I don't see any real unusual movement out of the car. Well, the good thing about it, if he feels that, we're so close to green flag pit stops. What I would do if it really feels like it, or, or Todd Perry, his crew chief, sees it on the stopwatch, get the pit road now. We talked about Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's got his hands full right now, Ryan Newman in that 12 car. My guess would be on the 43 car, the tires are worn out. Probably. Once they get worn out, the road, there's not much you're room left on. You're clear, you're clear. This is a battle for the fourth position right here. You know, something we've not talked about is if we're getting close to green flag pit stops, this pit road can be one of the most treacherous to get on. It never fails, and it comes from veterans sometimes. You have to get on the apron to get on the pit road. Very slick. We'll see cars spin out. We'll see them miss entrance here, have to go back out on the racetrack, but this is dead in the middle of turn four right there. It kind of sneaks up on you. One more for our Darlington stripe count. That would be Dale Jr. And that's just the ones we've been able to catch and see. 17. Well, watch it. That 49 car just came out of the pits. Yeah, new tires. There, there's what new tires will that's, do for you, though. It's Kevin LePage. It stops soon at 207 laps. Jimmy Johnson leads Matt Kenseth by four tenths of a second. Greg Biffle is two seconds off the lead. Then Junior. Ryan Newman, Jeff Gordon, Carl Edwards, Denny Hamlin, and Robbie Gordon. Two or both were just within seconds of going a lap down. Yeah, those two along with Casey Mears. J.J. Yaley will get the free pass and get back on the lead lap as pit road is open. Steve? And just listening to Jimmy Johnson, Mike, he said that the car got tight off of turn two, and he's a little bit loose on throttle when he gets back into it. They're going to make some air pressure adjustments on that number 48 Chevy of Jimmy Johnson. You see they do the windshield tear off. Dick. On the last pit stop, Matt Kenseth said that the car was just a little bit loose. They made the slightest adjustment, and on that entire most recent run, the car was tight all the way. So another very tiny adjustment to try to fix that. To Matt. Junior had expected to pit on lap 218. Now you saw from the in car the rub on the wall. He says, I just hit it slightly, shouldn't be bad. Meanwhile, the 16 of Biffle, 15.6 seconds, no changes. They wanted to take a look at that right front fender. He also got into the fence. Just watching, looked like for the most part, everyone kind of somewhat went out where they came in. You can see right there, Ryan Newman gains the spot. Greg Biffle loses one. Kyle Bush and the five, we've been talking about his crew, they gained one, but for the most part, everybody went out where they came in. There's the time on pit road, including the pit stop for four tires. The Dodge Charger 500 on Fox is sponsored by UPS, proud sponsor of Dale Jarrett's 88.4. The Dodge Charger 500 is delivered by UPS. UPS delivers the chance to manage your own free fantasy auto racing team and win two tickets to any Fox broadcast race. Just go to foxsports.com, keyword UPS. Getting ready to restart after the fifth caution flag tonight. Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, Ryan Newman, Greg Biffle, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon, Carl Edwards, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Bush, and Mark Martin, your top 10. Here we go. Well, past halfway, we still have 25 cars on the lead lap. That includes J.J. Yaley, who just got a free pass. Now our top two, Jimmy Johnson in the 48, Matt Kenseth in the 17, they clear the lap traffic, but Ryan Newman in the 12, he gets hung behind Jamie McMurray in the 26 car, who is actually one lap down. this 24 car here, Jeff Gordon. 
won here six times. He's been just hanging out just in the top side of the top 10. Right now, looking at Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car, who's actually running in the fifth position. Yeah, I, I like what the 24's been doing, Larry. They haven't been stellar yet, but they've been hanging around, making those subtle adjustments. And uh, he's one of those guys you won't hear a lot about here until you get down about 100 miles to go. Larry, uh, 140 laps, 150 laps to go. Could we do this on one more stop if we had to? Could do it on one more stop. You know, as, as we drew near that last possible green flag stop, you heard all the complaints about guys on tires. All you right. saw Kevin LePage on fresh tires, what that would do for you. So I would say that would be a little bit of a stretch on tires, but yes, you could make it on fuel. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think anybody will try this though because the tires are so worth so much. And all it takes is one or two coming getting fresh tires. They're beating you two, two and a half seconds a lap. Matt Kenseth trying for his first Darlington win, now in second place. Jeff Hammond wants to analyze Matt's pit stop. Mike, I've been watching the 17 crew, and you, have, you guys have also noticed this all night long. They've been very fast. The two previous stops were 12-6 and a 13-4. On this last stop, as they came in second place, watch the right front tire change. The tire comes off the right front, falls down in front of the car. He has to jump over that tire. That don't seem like a whole lot but it slowed that stop down to a 14.1. And that's still a great stop. Don't misunderstand me, but when you're used to doing the sub 13s, that costs you that little bit, puts you out right behind Jimmy Johnson. I believe they could have got the lead if they hadn't had that little miscue. And, there, and Jeff, it wasn't that many years ago, if you had a 14 second pit stop on pit road with four tires, you could probably go from 15th to third. Back, uh, back in the day, that meant you had four air wrenches and four guys changing tires with two jacks. You know, we talked at the top of the show as the racetrack cools down, gaining grip, speed will come up. Uh, in fact, Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Kyle Busch, a lot of those drivers in the top 10 just a couple laps ago ran the fastest lap that they have run in this race. Here comes Carl Edwards continuing to march back toward the front in this 99 car. Just went around Jeff Gordon in the 24 for six. Steve Burns, they continue to make that car better. Yeah, Carl Edwards likes that 99, Larry Mack. He just said for the short run, we're tight, especially on the gas. But at the end of the run, we are bad. Translation, good on those old tires. It reminds me of an old track called Lakeview, the way it's slick. I like it. <laughs> Edwards is the subject of tonight's Ford bold move of the race. Getting past Bobby Labonte here and flashing past Tony Stewart. And Kyle Bush Edwards went as far back as 40th before climbing back now into sixth place. But that's good information that he gave his crew chief Wally Brown. I'm too tight on short runs, but I'm good on long runs. What will be good about that information? If we get down to the end of the race, they know they'll have to make an adjustment if it's a short run to free the car up. Well, I wonder if they got that spring rubber socked in there because uh, he's looking pretty fast. And Larry, it's amazing standing up here. You can see that the cars are running much faster than they were earlier today. Yes, sir. Getting that grip. Coming off turn two particularly. See a lot more speed there than we saw earlier. Let's check in on Denny Hamlin because Hamlin's going to 12. Oops, slow down the front straightaway comes Jamie McMurray. Uh, that car, I guess it's under power, but it is not under much. McMurray's going to limp his uh, Crown Royal Fusion around here. See, he's about 70 miles per hour. Now, Jamie was one lap down at this point. Yeah, he's coasting. Might make it around. He's on the back pit road, Bob. Yeah, he's pulled off the racetrack. In fact, he's been about the only Roush car that has not been consistently up in the top 10 or 12 tonight. So let's get back to Hamlin then, who is now down to 12th place. And Steve, I think that's about as far down the running order as he's been tonight. Yeah, and he's he's surprised, Mike. I tell you, before the race, he told me that what he learned in the Bush race and winning it last night, that he was going to be really good late in a long green flag run. And he just told Mike Ford that he's been loose everywhere late in the run. On that last pit stop, they gave him four tires and made a track bar adjustment. They went down a round and a half. You know, Steve, I'm sure uh, if you if he'd been complaining about his hand, you would have told us. But I am concerned 
two hard races last week with those 19 stand, stitches in his hand. One here last night, and here he is again tonight. I tell you, he's under, he looks like a guy that's got it under a lot of strain to me. But we've seen this look before, D.W. Denny Hamlin, he almost never even blinks when he's driving this race car. And he's using that, uh, laying that arm up on the wheel you see right there to hold it, to help steer the car. And what, what's he saying, Steve? Daryl, since the race has started, he hasn't said a word about his hand, but I did ask him at 5.30 this afternoon how it felt, and he said, great, but that was four hours ago uh, before he'd run 220-some laps. And I guess we need to update our fans, maybe fans that did not watch the Richmond race last week, about a week and a half ago, testing it out at Lowe's Motor Speedway in Charlotte. After the test, Denny and some of the crew members were kind of clowning around and having foot races around the tractor and trailer. He grabbed a piece of chrome to make a turn around the tractor and trailer and sliced his hand. That ha that's how he injured it. Jeff? Mike, what I'm noticing right now is Denny Hamlin's loose. But if you look, also Tony Stewart and J.J. Yaley, they're back over 24th and 25th, and we've already seen Tony spin out with a loose condition. Makes me think that maybe all the Gibbs cars have got similar setups, and they're really fighting with this racetrack. While you look at Jimmy Johnson and maybe Jeff Gordon, Hendrick teammates, they're up there in the top 10 running pretty well. So it may have something to do with team cars. But Jeff and Darrell, let's think about something. This is a big racetrack, a high-speed racetrack. Most high-speed racetracks, what do we fight with race cars? Turning. Not turning. Yeah. Well, here, maybe if they have moved the balance of their cars where they've got a lot of front down force, they're fighting rear grip here at this racetrack. Right now, Dale Makes Jr. Sense. is there, trying to hold off Carl Edwards. This is for pit place. Stanton Barrett has taken his car to the garage area, rear end trouble. He would only be the second car to fall out of this race, joining Derek Cope, who left the race after 11 laps. Everybody else still in there. And 25 cars on the lead lap. Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, Greg Biffle. And on top of the pit boxes, Chad Knaus, Robbie Reiser. Definition only on Fox. Check local listings for the game and start in your area. You know, I talked with Joe Torrey recently. The Yankees have a little pool. Gene Monahan, their trainer, big NASCAR fan. And Johnny Damon is a big fan of Casey Kane, our pole sitter. He said he loves the way he drives, one of the young stars of the sport. Kane, of course, uh, led 41 laps in this race, battling to get back in the top 10. Yeah, right now, Casey's running 12th. And I think he's still got himself in pretty good condition position right now. If they can make a few more adjustments and keep up with the racetrack. And right now, the, the main thing is we take a look at our leader, Jimmy Johnson, who is not only a leader of the race, but also a point leader. What about Tony Stewart? He started to fall back through the field. He spun out earlier, but they made some adjustments. The car still not like it needs to be. He passed Casey Mears a few laps ago, but now Casey's right back on him again. He gets a little bit loose off the of turn uh, four right there. He's making a move underneath Tony. And uh, there he goes in front. Tony Stewart currently 24. Mike? Here's the problem for Stewart. He is only eight seconds from going a lap down to Jimmy Johnson. And he's driving like it, too. I've had, he's had that car every way but loose. He's had her sideways, and uh, Casey Mears and he are grabbing at it now. I'm thinking that uh, Casey might want to let him by. And you saw the points right there. Remember, Stewart comes in here second to points, so he would fall back to third. <laughs> Tony's getting a little irritated with yep. uh, Casey here. A little bit of the chrome horn here. Well, when the leader's coming, beep, beep. But remember, Casey Mears in the 42, he's still on the lead lap, too, so he's fighting for right. survival Right, no, they're here. both trying to hang on to the lead lap, but the leader's coming, and Tony says, dude, I got to go. I'll tell you the biggest fans are in this whole crew are cameramen. I'll tell you, great tight shots, and uh, they love it when they get cars up close and up close and personal like that. Well, what I love is when they hit the button over here and you say, did y'all get that? And they say, yeah, we got it. We'll show it to you, two or three angles. Yeah. Great job. Got fellas. a little battle brewing here for fourth. Ryan Newman in the 12 looks like he's just going to pull down possibly and let Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, he's not, though, but this is a battle right now for fourth. You see Carl Edwards in the 99. He just keeps moving forward with his 99 car. Steve? And Mike, his crew chief, Wally Brown, and spotter Bobby Hudson have been keeping Carl, trying to keep him patient. Remember, he started seventh, dropped all the way to 40th, said his car was undrivable. Now he's in the sixth position. Here's what they've been telling Carl. Still a long way to go. Patient, they will come to you. 
Don't use it up, bud. They're coming right for you. Coming back to you. Don't abuse it, bud. Patience. We will get them on the long run, Carl. You'll get every one of them, buddy. Patience. Keep it under you. Smooth. And that's Bobby Hudson, Carl Edwards' is, is spotter. And, and the crew chief, the spotter, besides making decisions on adjustments, as I talked earlier, there's no strategy here as far as pit stops. You change four tires every time the yellow flag comes out. But besides making a decision on adjustments, the biggest thing you've got to be is a salesman with that driver. Convince him, I know you're sliding, but you're sliding a little less than everyone else. Look, the driver's going to say, my car is not very good. But guess what? You're better than everybody else, and that's all that matters. When we last saw Jamie McMurray, he was coasting to a stop in the backstretch pits. He has finally made his way back to the garage with Dick Burton. And they're in no hurry to try to work on this car. The belt broke. What's the belt for? Well, the belt operates a oil pump, and uh, just one of those deals. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what happened. It just uh, broke. I saw the oil pressure light come on, and then the motor tried to lock up, so I put it in neutral. We. Uh, had a good car at the beginning of the race and I you know we over adjusted and got it really tight and then never really could get it back once you get back in traffic I just I struggled to uh, to get by guys so frustrating day and uh, frustrating season indeed the engines don't run without oil pressure now let me tell you what can happen to that fail you saw Kevin Harvick have the problem with his radiator we've talked about all these big chunks and clunks of rubber that can break an oil pump belt here at this place very easily. Yeah, they're clog belts. They got teeth. It's a rubber belt that runs the oil pump on the front of the engine. You pick up a piece of debris, it hangs up in that uh, in those pulleys, and it just flows that belt right off of it there. It stretches it and just snaps it sometimes. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the A car in the fourth position. Matt, about four and a half seconds behind our leader, Jimmy Johnson. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. was just advised by his spotter, Steve Meal. They're going to run about another 40 laps on this run. Now, that's what Jr. had asked earlier after he bounced off the wall because they were so close to his run. He said, I didn't know we were only seven or eight laps from pitting, so keep me abreast of where we are in our run. I hate to hit stuff, and I definitely don't like hitting stuff here. And, Daryl, i got to believe that's... That's important information to give that driver. You're 20 laps into this run. You're 40 laps into this run. You're 15 laps away from a pit stop. Oh, man, that's stuff you love to hear. Uh, you know, you just, it just, it gives you a goal. It gives you something to work toward. Your next pit stop is coming, and you kind of almost count the laps mentally in your head. Caution, turn one. Oh, my Big God. slide for Sadler. Get it going, get it going. And that was just what Casey Mears, Bobby Labonte, Joe Nemechek, and Tony Stewart needed because they were all within about four seconds of being lapped by Jimmy Johnson. That's the second caution in a row. It's what Tony Stewart needed because, yeah, that's twice he's about been Yeah, I don't, Larry, I don't know. I think they're probably about out of adjustments on that 20 car. They've done everything they know to do to it, I think. They can help it for the few laps, but they can't keep it under him all night for the long run. And this will put Kyle Petty back on the lead lap. He will get the free pass. It is the sixth caution flag of the night. And we know that Sadler, Elliot Sadler in the 38, he's had his hands full. He was a lap down uh, out of the top 25. And that just shows you how little grip there is in the racetrack. That car looked like it almost picked up speed, even with the tires locked up. One there, caution. Now we're talking about oil drive belts. Jeff Hammond. Mike, we're talking about on Jamie McMurray's car. This is the oil pump. This is the drive belt that works off the front crankshaft. That's what pumps the oil through the engine. When this belt breaks, you lose oil pressure. When you do that, the engine can't be ran any longer. And what might have happened here at Darlington, all these pieces of rubber could get built up, get caught up in these cog belts, or even some of these stones. This is one thing a lot of times you have to worry about, is all the debris that comes off of this racetrack could get captured in between this cog belt and the belt and could easily knock it off. And there goes your engine. Mike. Thanks, Jeff. Good explanation. Yep. That, I mean, that tells the tale right there. Man, it's got some stuff, hasn't it? He's got a bunch of stuff. There. Rubber and rocks, clog belts. Pit Road's going to be busy. Pit Road is going to be clogged, Steve. And Mike, Jimmy Johnson told Chad Canals he's a little loose through one and two. He needs more forward bite off of turn four. 
So the adjustment on that 48 car, they're going to take a half pound of air out of the right rear tire. They've already done that. You see them making the stop now to the left side of the number 48 car. Nick. All during that last run, Matt Chenseth and his crew chief, Robbie Reiser, discuss what they should do on this pit stop. The car has consistently been tight on the last two runs. Matt, the 48 beat him. And there's the 16, Greg Biffle led the most laps so far tonight. Work already completed. On the left side, he's down and away. Air pressure taken out of both rear tires to help with forward grip. I believe the Killer Bees got beat that time on pit road. See right there, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car, as well as Greg Biffle, the Doug Richard group, looks like they beat Matt Kenseth off pit road. Casey Kane right there, he gains four spots. Well, he needed that. So with 118 laps to go, it's a whole new race in Darlington. My principal financial group will give you an edge. Mama said there'd be nights like this as Jimmy Johnson leads Greg Biffle Dale Earnhardt Jr. Matt Kenseth and Jeff Gordon for this restart. Happy Mother's Day mom and to uh, the mothers of all our kids. Yeah you know what uh, my mom gets a double bonus this weekend. Tomorrow is her birthday as well as Mother's Day May the 14th. And you know what today is my wife Linda's birthday May the 13th and of course Mother's Day tomorrow for her. Well happy birthday and happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Gay, and to all the moms out there. Yes, sir. Stevie, we're thinking of you. 36 years, baby. It's been good. Green flag. And Johnson and Biffle take off. Eleanor Jr. really didn't get that great of a restart. I tell you what, he's got a pretty good race car sitting up there in the third position in an eight car. Oh, here comes Kenton. Did he get a run down the back straightaway? Pokes the nose inside. Going to clear Dave Blaney by turn three. And those sparks pretty much tell the tale. They're getting faster and quicker as the night goes on. Yeah, no air pressure is low right now. That thing has got, if it's going to have any grip, it better have it right now. Hamlin and Mayfield right here. This is for 15th. Yeah, Jeremy is uh, having a silence, uh, quietly working his way toward the front, having a darn good run, and uh, right behind him is Kenny Schrader, who's having a great run. Schrader in the Air Force 21. Or right in front of him. In I front of that say. group, yeah. right? Yaley behind. Yeah, Schrader has not had a top 10 since finishing ninth in the Daytona 500 in February. Jeremy Mayfield, he has no top 10 finish in 2006. Jeff Burton on the move, the singular Chevy, past Ryan Newman. And you just had to know that, that the ability that Jeff Burton has always had to get around this place with the way Richard Childress Racing has stepped its whole program up, that he would be a factor tonight. Burton, a two-time winner here. As on the left of your screen, Biffle draws a bead on Jimmy Johnson. Now, Biffle has led 84 laps tonight. That's the most of any driver. He also led the most laps at California, Atlanta, and Phoenix, but in those three races had no finish better than 15. Now you just saw Burton go by his teammate Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer had a good car in the early part of the race. Right now he's a lap down. They had a mistake on the pit stop where the tire rolled across pit road, and he ended up going to the rear of the field. That 99 car there, he just gets closer and closer to the front all the time. Ninth place, so that pushes uh, full center Casey Kane back to 10th, Matt. The big question Kane has, Mike, though, he says, why were we so good earlier in the race and now we're struggling a little bit, even though he's having a solid run in the top 10. They regrouped, went back on some adjustments, but he just came back on the radio and says, we are tight again, guys, to Steve. Hey, Matt, interesting radio communication between Carl Edwards and Wally Brown. Wally said, Carl, give me a lap around this place. So Carl keyed the mic and said, all right, here we go. Initial, initial turn, we're good. We're good on the throttle. It won't turn off turn two. Up on the top, it won't turn in three and four. We're good. Good on the straightaway.
away. So he did an entire lap while keying the mic. <laughs> I'm bored commentary. That's pretty impressive at Darlington where it takes three hands to get around here. Let me tell you what else is pretty impressive. We've got just a little over 100 laps to go. We've been talking about our rookies all night long. Right now, we've got five rookies in the top 20. We've got Denny Hamlin right here, who ran in the top five a lot. He's sitting there in 15th. And just right behind him, you see Martin Truex Jr. in the one car. He just went by Mayfield for 16th. And then behind Jeremy Mayfield, you've got two of the Ganassi teammates, two of the Ganassi rookies, rookies Strimmy and Sorensen. And then right behind Sorensen in the 18 car, you've got J.J. Yaley. So, and, and I feel like Cliff Boyer would still be on the lead lap had he not had that pit stop problem. So five rookies in the top 20 here at Darlington with less than 100 laps to go. Well, we started with three rookies in the top five, and it has proven not to be a problem. Now, Robbie Gordon had a good run going, but uh, Carl Edwards just took advantage of him. And now Casey Kane may get him as well. What's up, Dick? Well, he's got the car seems to be tight right at the beginning of a run, Mike. But by and large, Robbie Gordon has had a very good night. His best finish all year long is 10th right now. He is running in the ninth position. But the, the thing that's most impressive about him is Gordon has a reputation as being impulsive. And impulsive here will get you into the wall. What he's instead of doing, instead of being impulsive, is trying to save his tires, being cool, being smart. So far, so good. Robbie Gordon done one of the best runs he's had all year long inside the top 10. Doing great. See, that, that's, that's where a driver has to have a crew chief that he will listen to and a spotter that he will trust. He's got to listen to what they're telling him. He's got to believe what they're telling him, and then he's got to do what they're telling him go back to the audio a while ago with Bobby Hudson who has been in this sport for 30 years talking to his driver Carl Edwards. Kurt Busch has been up and down that car had fallen well back in the last green flag run but now in the Roger Penske middle light two he's holding his own in 13th place. Yeah, they, that car I don't know kind of it's, it's interesting to me it runs up front early in the race then they fall back through the field and Every now and then they get her fixed up for the end, but uh, he's 13th here, got a little work to do. And Darren, we were talking about how unique this place is, kind of a one of a kind. NASCAR would not allow the teams to test here. Roy McCauley, Kurt Busch, they decided to go to a similar racetrack we don't race it anymore to test. They went to Rockingham a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it's fit. surface wise, they're almost identical. Uh, Rockingham will chew a set of tires up in 15, 20 laps, just like this joint will. What's impressive about Bush, he restarted 21st in this green flag run, and he has climbed up to 13th. Your leader by three tenths of a second, Jimmy Johnson. The in black, some close calls today and when the sun set tonight. Yeah, definitely so right there. We see the 99 car, the 49 right there, Kevin LePay. He gets him a strike. Denny Hamlin, the rookie, and the number 11, he gets him one early on. That's Dale Earnhardt Jr. That's Reed Sorensen out right there in the 41 car, followed by Dale Jarrett. He goes up there and kisses the wall very lightly, politely. Here's Dale Hart Jr. right behind Clint Boyer in 07. He gets a one. Also, later on, Dale Jr. also gets up an outside retaining wall and gets him a darling in strike. Even our camera has had a scrape with the wall. Whoa. And the count so far, and that includes the camera lens. 20 so far. Jimmy Johnson had the lead moments ago. Greg Biffle back in front. Greg Biffle right now charging hard right there. Gets on the inside of Jimmy. Jimmy knows he's there. This is to get the corner. He rolls out of it. Biffle takes the lead. 72 laps led for Jimmy Johnson. It's 87 for Greg Biffle, your current leader. And this has been a Visa race break. No matter what it takes, life takes Visa. So it's Biffle, Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth. And how about Jeff Gordon, who is a six-time winner of this event it was last year at this time when he took a tumble in the point standings after this race. Last year this time this team right here really did a nose dive. But so far tonight they've been building, I mean just been working on this car and getting everything put back like it needs to. He's been climbing up the a ladder. Now he finds himself in fourth position with his teammate Jimmy Johnson just two positions ahead of him. So these team cars maybe are sharing information because Gordon has definitely gotten better as the night gotten longer. And of course Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to win back to back races for the first time in his cup career. Let's re Join Daryl, Larry, and Mike. Yeah, don't forget, Jeff Gordon was second here last May. 20 Darlington stripes by our uh, unofficial punch stat count. I, sorry, I can't say that. It's copyrighted. 26 cars in the lead lap. Six cautions for 24 laps. Tony Stewart 
Uh, not in such great shape here and Kevin Harvick. So two of the contenders for the cup having troubles. Harvick major Stuart Minor. And, and we don't want the, the boys up at RCR or their engine department getting too nervous there. It actually was not an engine problem. It was a radiator problem right. in Harvick's car. Right. Had that piece of debris, a big piece of asphalt go into the radiator. Let's, let's take see a Burton, with Yeah, Burton. let's see how his car looks like it's running really good right now. He's in sixth place. Handling well, assist to the throttle here as he picks it up down here in the middle of turn three and four. Hearing playing with it, playing with it. Mats it right there. By the start finish line. Back out of there a little early. Not a lot of break in turn one little bit. Let it go to the top. Easier right through the center. Back off, get her turn, get her headed in the right direction. Gas her up. Whoa, baby, now that's what you got to watch out for off turn two. Down into three, a lot of break getting into three. All the way to the top, scrub, 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 scrape, scrape, scrape. Off of four. There is no other racetrack in the world like this one, I don't, I don't think. She is one of a kind. You don't want to duplicate it, but we don't want to lose it either. You got it. You got it. Couldn't duplicate it, I don't think. I don't think you could either. Uh, I think that Chris and these guys here running, they got the right idea. Let's fix her up. Let's dress her up. Things may have settled in here for just a bit, or maybe till the uh, next and final pit stop, as Jimmy Johnson sits one second behind Greg Biffle. Let's go to the Lowe's pit here, Steve. Mike, very short comment by Jimmy Johnson just a lap ago. He said, I need more grip off of turns two and four, more forward bite. Nick. Matt Kenseth has keyed his radio and told the crew that his car is better. It's still tight, but it's 50% better than it was before the last pit stop. To Matt. Dale Jr. running in the fifth position. Solid run, but the car just, like many runs tonight, just way too tight on the first 20 laps. It does start to go a little more to the neutral side, looking ahead to the final stop of what air pressure adjustments to make. Also, you were talking about the 31 of Jeff Burton, the two-time winner. The car has started off tighter on this run than it has all night long, and he is having a great performance tonight. 159th race is his last win. He's won here twice, maybe tonight is the night he breaks back in the victory lane as he takes that spot. Fifth place now for Burton. Well, there's a lot of decisions to be made on pit road because as Matt mentioned, possibly the final pit stop coming up in about 30 to 40 laps should we stay green. So this is when you've got to get it right, no mistakes, and give that guy driver the, the right adjustments. Earlier, Carl Edwards wanted a big change on his car. What's the radio traffic now on the 99? That was a bad lap with traffic, guys. Just count it. It's about positive reinforcement, Wally. Oh, sorry. I was just kidding that time. I hear you. I'm just kidding. I want to hear the bad ones, too. <laughs> and he was talking to his crew chief, Wally Brown, who is now, I think, with about his fourth race with Carl Edwards. Of course, Bob Osborne now over with Jamie McMurray. Uh, I think Carl just, just joking with him a little bit. You know, yeah, I don't want to hear the bad laps. But yeah, yep. you got to tell him also. I tell you, a guy that just keeps marching, he's nibbling away. Not too far behind our leaders right here, coming off turn four right there. If I look back and I saw that big DuPont sign coming after me, I'd be worried. It's a man that knows how to win this race. It's a thinking man's race. He's been doing a really well of a job all night long. Jeff Gordon in that 24 car. Fourth spot right now. Fourth spot and two and a half tenths of a second faster uh, than Matt Kenzer. Crossover move by Casey Kane. Battle for 13th here between Casey Kane and the nine, Denny Hamlin in the 11. Both those cars have really, really fallen off uh, the latter part of the race here, the second half of the race. Neither one of them good as they were in the beginning. I'm not sure some of it's not from damage from scrubbing the wall because the 11's been in the wall pretty hard a couple of times. Greg Biffle has led 100 laps. There are 86 to go. You can't fear anyone or any track. And he just keeps closing up. He's not too far behind uh, Kurt Busch there in the two car. So that's another spot he can gain here. 
Talk to Leonard Wood today. It's so good to see you guys. Leonard Wood, David Pearson, come to Darlington. Now, it doesn't get any better than nope. that. David Pearson, 10 wins here, like Mike mentioned at the top of the show. Get a hamburger steak out here at the Speedway Grill. Huh. What's that tell you? Life is good. Just Jeff up. Gordon uh, was the fastest car on the racetrack a couple laps ago, Matt. He's in third and closing on his teammate. Coming off his worst finish, Gordon, of 2006, a 40th last week at Richmond. Now he says the car is really starting to get loose on exit, but that's what Steve Letard says. Just keep what you're doing, keep your pace, because we are continuing to mow him down, currently in the third spot. He says they look to make, if it all goes green from here on out, their final stop at lap 323. Thanks, Matt. A second Roush Ford has fallen victim to oil pump drive belt failure. Dick and Carl Edwards are standing with me on pit road. Why two oil pump failure or drive belt failures in the Roush cars? What's going on? I don't know. Um, they do a great job building the engines and my crew did a great job. Got to thank all the Steve-O. Um, heck man, this, I love this racetrack and I hate to be behind pit wall, but we're going to head up to uh, Omaha, Nebraska, watch my brother race tomorrow night. I got to say get well to Gene Beach and hopefully Biffle wins this thing. He deserves it. Got to tell you one more thing about Carl Edwards before he disappears. He got out of that car, and with all the disappointment, he patted every crew member on the back and said thank you. That's what a real racer does. I like Carl Edwards. He's a, yes. he's a cool cat. I like him a lot. Three of the five ships in the Roush Armada still running in the top 10. And just to update, Jamie McMurray, who is out of the race, had the same thing happen. These cars have an external oil pump that's on the front of the engine. It's driven by a belt off the crankshaft. And we've talked about all the rubber and debris that, that flies around here. A lot of times that stuff will get in the, that belt, make the belt so tight it just snaps. I know here, Rockingham, Martinsville, a lot of places, Darrell, we used to run actually a little screen guard around that, that oil pump belt. Yeah, this shaker screen in front of the radiator, and then we'd run another piece of screen underneath the radiator back to the uh, cross member to keep any debris from coming up around the engine. Biffle lapping Sterling Marlin. In the 14 for the second time tonight. Marlin got a top 10 finish last week at Richmond. And here is Tony Stewart, who is once again about seven seconds from going a lap down. He just passed Kyle Petty to hold on to 17th. We're going to make Stewart our All-State Good Hands driver. On behalf of Tony, Allstate will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the Urban Youth Racing School. Allstate official insurance sponsor of NASCAR would appreciate that Stewart did a perfect 360, got his hands at nine and three, grabbed the gear, and went on. Just like in the movies. Matt? If, if you look at Stewart's racing resume, resume, Mike, his first career top 10 came right here at Darlington in the spring of 99, but he will tell you this is one of those racetracks where he's never been able to have one of those top five cars every single race, more of a six to a 12th place car. He says the forward bite now is 100% better, but they are still struggling here tonight in Darlington. You know, it almost sounds like Larry to me on that car. They got a nose weight issue. Like they burn that fuel off of the back of the car and it transfers weight to the front of the car and the car starts to respond. Yeah, because when you have that weight in the rear, that makes the car won't loose. And what lack of forward bite means when Tony pushes the throttle down, the rear wheels want to spin. Frank Biffle leading Jimmy Johnson by almost one second now and Jeff Gordon closing in. There. That was Dodge, the OGE ball. Now with Jimmy Johnson in the 48 lead, and you see his teammate Jeff Gordon in the 24 and second. Now Matt Kenseth has moved around his teammate, Greg Biffle, to take over third. We are about 10 to 15 laps away from the final pit stop, but this is what will happen if any of these leaders hit pit road any time over the next few laps because you can make it to the end from here. You can't be far behind them because as we mentioned earlier, fresh tires over 60 lap tires, two, two and a half seconds quicker per lap. Biffle looks like he needs those tires now, Larry. That car is backing up like it's got an anchor attached to it. 
And it's almost, it's almost like playing poker. You want to get those fresh tires as soon as you can, but at the same time, Jeff Hammond, you don't want to hit pit road and a caution come out and you'll be a lap down because of pitting under green. That's what I'm worried about. We've seen that several times this year, especially with Robbie Gordon. He hits pit road, caution comes out. Here at Darlington, you don't want to be caught on pit road. But like you're saying, Larry, if you could get to pit road and be the first guy there, probably you'd wind up having the lead by the time everything cycled through. And I would say cars that we'll see come to pit road pretty quick as we've got Jeff Gordon in the 24 car trying to take that lead away from his teammate, Whoa. Jimmy Johnson. Boy, that, if I was Rick Hendrick, I'd be, I'd be holding my breath. I'm surprised it's this much of a struggle for Gordon to get the lead from Johnson. Earlier, the Roush teammates swapped the lead back and forth with little drama so that each could get five bonus points for leading a lap. But Darrell, it didn't look like Jimmy wanted to give that lead up. No, I think Jimmy knows that if Jeff is that good and he caught him, he's in trouble. So Jeff Gordon, he's gonna race him back. Maybe that was a five point deal right there because Jeff hadn't led. But while they've been doing it, there's Matt Kenseth in the 17 car. He's moved back into the pitcher. But just remember, within the next few laps, all these cars will be on pit road for a pit stop. Yeah, Matt Kenseth kind of says, hey, you boys going up there and play if you want to. I'm serious. I'm coming to win this race. Well, Jeff Gordon has only led 70 laps this year in five races, and 62 of those laps were at Talladega. Jeff has led a total of over 1,500 laps here in his career, seventh all time. How about our pole sitter, Casey Kane? 17th place, and he's about seven seconds from losing a lap to Jimmy Johnson. I guess the string will be broken for him tonight. Three wins from a pole, and uh, doesn't look like that's going to happen tonight. Yeah, we've got a lot of cars that would love to see a caution. They're about to go a lap down. Like you mentioned, Casey Kane, Kyle Petty, J.J. Yaley, Casey Mears, Joe Nemechek just in front of our leader, Jimmy Johnson, right now. Jimmy Johnson won four races last year. He's already won three in 2006. Daytona, Las Vegas, Talladega. Well, I tell you, interesting race to me tonight, though, how all these guys have worked so well together all night long. And there you go, Jeff Gordon, back around his teammate. But just like, the, just like that, I know they're teammates, but all night long we've seen so much give and take. Look at this wad of cars right in front of them. That's three of the cars I just mentioned. Nemechek, Mears, and Yaley fighting to try to stay on the lead lap right here. Last time they got in this position, a caution saved them when Elliott Sadler spun. Man, I tell you right now, there's a, this is ingredients for some disaster right here on old tires. Now, Kenseth went around Jimmy Johnson in the 48. He takes over the second spot. 55 laps to go. And David Stremme. Yeah, he's going to come uh, to pit road. He had an engine problem off of turn four, and he's coming around this time to come to pit road. To complicate matters among the leaders, here comes Kevin LePage flying into the picture. Now, LePage is 13 laps down, but he's got new tires. Yeah, well, he's been off sequence right. with these other guys, and he'll get those tires and blow by a bunch of them every now and then. He's at the top of your screen on that Freightliner 40. But it, it shows you what tires will do for anybody. And, Daryl, I'd say with a lot of those leaders seeing that, they're questioning the crew chief, when are you going to give me tires? When do we pit? <laughs> yeah. There comes some guys, I think, on pit road here now, Larry. It looks like the yeah. two car. Lap Dave Blaney, and Blaney is uh, three laps down. Stremme, who is two laps down, and Kevin Harvick, 17 laps down. That's who's on pit road. Clint Boyer in the 07 car. Here comes Kurt Busch in the two car. Once some of these cars start hitting pit road, that's when you'll see all the rest of them follow. Look at all the right side tires, though. The, you can tell all of them have been rubbed up against the wall. Now, Kurt Busch is the first of our lead lap cars to pit. Busch is Greg Biffle in the 16 yep. car. He's hit pit road. We talked about he was really waiting on this pit stop. Now, Kurt Busch's last lap on track was a 34 flat. Biffle's last lap was a 34 2. We'll take a look and see what they can do with new tires. 
J.J. Yaley who just went a lap down also pitting and so is Bobby Labonte. 45 miles an hour is pretty slow on pit road. Reed Sorensen also in the pits Matt. Mike Doug Richard Biffles crew chief asked him what can I get you to help that race car on possibly this final run it said I just need fresh tires the car was good but it really lost the grip near the end as you see the 24 Jeff Gordon is in now Gordon six time winner here going for number seven Dick what about the 17 of Kenseth 17 of the Kenseth is in and this is the first time that he has pitted with the nose pointed toward the wall Steve more tires for Jimmy Johnson. He had gotten very loose. He wanted more forward bite, Dick. Kenseth's pit stop still underway. He has a net gain of five spots so far. Matt. The 24, you can see they're going to try to pull a tear off off the windshield to give him some better visibility. Gordon's car was really loose on that run, Dick. 48 car almost had an accident here on pit road. Just managed to duck to the right of the 21 and Schrader. I mean, it was within inches. And that's going to be very costly, Dick Bergman. He almost had to come to a complete stop as Kenny Schrader in the 21 was turning into his pits. Almost near disaster, as you pointed out, Dick. Cost him a lot of time on getting out of the pits there. He's way back behind the leaders now. Here comes Jeff Gordon and uh, Matt Kenseth up to speed. Nema check pits, so does Riggs, and here's Ryan Newman on pit road, Matt. Back bar adjustment completed for Newman. Now he was near the end of this leader cycle, but most of the guys like Biffle pitted a little earlier than what they're originally thinking just because the tires were wearing out so much quicker near the end of this run. Tony Raines was in, Denny Hamlin, Scott Riggs, and uh, Yaley comes back in for a check of the left front. Robbie Gordon. Comes in, gives up second place. Kyle Bush is your new leader, and now he's on pit road as well. So this should about cycle us through lead lap cars. Now remember Biffle, he was running 34-20 before he pitted. His last lap, 31 flat. Three seconds faster on new tires. And because he was the very first lead lap car besides Kurt Busch to hit pit road, it cycled out that he will be the leader after Robbie Gordon and Kyle Busch make their pit stops. 49 laps to go in Darlington, South Carolina in the Dodge Charger 500 on Fox get into his pit he's just in front of Johnson There's and Schrader in the 21 pulling and trying to get into his pits right there so Johnson had to hit the brake and the crew not happy and remember this was green flag stop so he went from being right up there in the lead pack with those guys to he's almost five seconds behind now here's Jeff Gordon's stop they like what they see there. But the big winner is the man who's led the most laps tonight, 129 of them so far. Greg Biffle, Jimmy Johnson. After something that was not Kenny Schrader's fault, Schrader came in. He was ahead of Jimmy before Jimmy pulled out of his pit. So Kenny's got to slow down and pull in. Jimmy's got to wait and go around. And Johnson is now five seconds behind Greg Biffle. Nobody's fault on that. No. Just one of those deals. One of them racing deals. But still, Steve, it's got to be a little frustrating. Mike, it was very frustrating he was on, when he was on pit road. Now, just a second ago, crew chief Chad Canal said to Jimmy, hey, you okay? What's going on, bud? Jimmy just said very simply, I need forward bite. Chad said, save your tires to the end. Well, all I know is our top three or four cars, Biffle, Kenseth, Gordon, and Johnson, right now with 39 laps to go, pretty equal on the stopwatch. That's not be saving anything right now, because by the time you uh, have your saved up tires, they'll be so far away from you, you can't catch them. You got to go like crazy, right? You got to go as hard as you can. You almost believe now, Jimmy Johnson, what he needs is an equalizer, and that would be a caution lap. Terry Labonte in his final Darlington appearance pulls down to the inside. Been a tough day for the two time champ. Next weekend, NASCAR moves to Charlotte. Our coverage begins on Friday on Speed. The Craftsman Truck Series race on Speed Saturday begins with the Nextel Open on FX, followed by the Nextel All Star Challenge. Mark Martin, your big winner last year. 
Fox family of networks. It's where you gather for racing every weekend. Jeff Gordon, who's currently running third in this race, will be our guest in the Hollywood Hotel. Greg Biffle leading. It looks like you got the Roush teammates one, two, and then the Hedrick teammates three, four. Jeff. Well, you see, like, like you're pointing out, a lot of team cars up there in the top three or four. Also in the top ten, Roush and Hendrick cars uh, running extremely good here tonight. As you watch uh, right now, Greg Biffle go around Terry Labonte one more time. Our leader and Greg I mean again he, he knows how to win at this racetrack so right here in the closing lap you got 31 laps to go he is really up on that wheel driving as hard as he can because he knows his teammate Matt Kenseth is going to put pressure on him if he gets a chance. Biffle uh, of course won this race last year he's led the most laps but in the last four races that he's led the most laps he has not won he's finished second 42nd 16th and 15th. Well, tonight we've been talking about it, and I think Carl Edwards kind of summed it up. He's run good enough this year to win several races, and his teammate said, I hope he can close the deal tonight. Meanwhile, if you're Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car, you're hoping for the number 48. He won the 48th running of the Daytona 500. This is the 48th spring race being run here at Darlington. Johnson six seconds back. Jeff Gordon two and a half off the lead. Matt Kenseth 1.2 behind Greg Biffle, who has now led 140 laps tonight. And right behind Biffle, Terry Labonte in his final Darlington start. This track has meant so much to the two-time Nextel Cup champion. He started his first cup race here, driving for Texas Oil man Billy Hagan in the Stratograph car. He won his first cup race here, the Southern 500, one of the toughest of all races to win. And then he won the last Labor Day Southern 500 at Darlington. American Idol Bucky Covington, and, uh, his brother Rocky and his buddies. Now you got to look at their pit passes, their pit pass holders. That's a piece of history right there. Because it's from where he's from, The Rock, Rock, Rockingham, North Carolina. Yeah, they came over to coach. You were there, Mike, yep. and uh, hung out for a little while. They're cool guys. So, yeah, having a good time at the races, boys. He's got a, a full schedule. They're going on tour, but he said it had been too long since he'd been to a race. He wanted to come to Darlington. Big well, Greg Biffle, our leader, just about to put Kurt Busch in the two car up there, a lap down. Kurt's the last car on the lead lap right now in 16. But Larry, I, I, once again, as they run a few laps here, that 24 car, all of a sudden, he starts inching back toward uh, the Matt Kenseth and Greg Biffle. He's closing up on them here at about a tenth or two a lap, just like he did earlier. This is a battle for sixth right here between Ryan Newman and the 12, Kyle Busch in the five. Kyle Busch just continues to click off those top 10 finishes. Jeff Gordon right now is the fastest car on the racetrack. He is 1.8 seconds behind leader Greg Biffle. When he comes out of the pit and on restarts particularly, uh, he, he's a little bit slower than the other guys, but as they get into the run, the more they run, the faster he gets and those guys back up to him. If we stay green, bet on Gordon to be right there at the finish. <laughs> right now, he's definitely faster than Greg Biffle and Matt Kenseth up there running one and two with 25 laps to go. Let's update you on Tony Stewart, his night. Remember, he started in the 13th position where they dropped the green flag in the 20 car. Looked like he was going to march to the front. Car got loose. Car is not handled like he has wanted it to. Right now, he's hanging on the lead lap in 13th, about five seconds from being lap. I will guarantee you if they come out of here with a top 15 finish tonight, with the weekend they've had, they'll probably feel pretty good about it. I guarantee you, spun out and everything else, and here he is. Uh, you know, he's not done yet. No, he's going to lose a spot in the next Hell Cup standings to Matt Kenson. Martin Truex is just ahead of him, and Martin's uh, running 12th, not too far ahead of him is Reed Sorensen. So he's got some cars he could pass. Coming up next on Fox, Mad TV or your late local news, which in some markets may be the same thing. Jeff Gordon has got one of those kind of race cars you like to have at Darlington. The longer you run, the better it gets. The longer the other guys run, the worse they get. He's just going to drive by Matt Kenseth in the 17 car. He takes a second position away. Now there's 23 laps to go. And right now he's about one and a half seconds behind leader Greg Biffle. And Greg Biffle is catching a lot of lap cars. 
23 laps to go in the Dodge Charger 500 on Fox. And his laps are about three or four tenths of a second quicker than Biffles. He's got time to make up the distance. Oh, Jeff's got him an interesting looking setup for here, doesn't he, Larry? You he know, just flies that nose down the straightaway. Look how high that thing is going down the straightaway. Normally, uh, the car would have a much different attitude. We see a lot of cars up in the nose, but yeah, the 24 car is definitely up higher on the straightaways than most cars. Matt Kenseth is third, 2.3 seconds back. There's Kenseth. And Jimmy Johnson fourth and fading a bit. He's gone to five seconds behind. Well, Darrell was pointing out to me at break, and Darrell, I think you, you, this is what you said, and I agree. With that problem they had on pit road, it's almost like he, he can't catch Kenseth. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is not going to catch him unless they have a caution. Let me just take as the points leader what this race will give me another top five. I think that's smart racing on their part. They had a problem there and they can't do anything about it. Get out of here clean. Dale Jr. 9.8 seconds off the lead. He's got a three second cushion on Ryan Newman. In the sixth place did. car who started on the front row. Jr. did a nice job tonight you guys for gutting it out grunting it out to not feeling good and coming home here in the fifth place. Now Newman's got work to do to keep Kyle Busch behind him at sixth place. Yeah, Kyle's a lot like his uh, teammate Jeff Ford. His car seems to really get stronger later on in a run. Kyle's just been in a good clean smart race all night long in the and, five car. Oh by the way uh, the guy in the sixth car Mark Martin. He's back there in eighth place. And we haven't talked much about him all night long. Just a second. Just about a second behind Kyle Busch. And then Jeff Burton. Burton is 17 seconds off the lead, running by himself in ninth place. Good thing about it, if he can finish here in the top 10 with the problems that Casey Mears, Dale Jarrett has had tonight, it would put him up in the top 10 in points. Listen to that. Working that throttle. That and, that and. and here's 10th place and the highest rookie in the race, Denny Hamlin. Who's capping off a really fine two weeks? Oh, he is, and of course, with that hand, uh, you know, the injury to his hand, I think he's just done a yeoman's job of uh, staying on the wheel. Reed Sorensen, 11th, another good rookie run. Tony Stewart has to be disappointed, running in 12th, and he is about four and a half seconds from going a lap down once again. He's been on the lead lap all night. Yeah. But about a lot like Jimmy Johnson last week, Mike. I mean, he was in trouble there for a little while. And to recover here and to be running in 12th place, uh, that's that's a pretty nice recovery for that team. He just drove by Mark Trex Jr. in the one car, so that would right now be three rookies in the top 15. We've been talking about Ken Schrader earlier tonight. Another good top 15 run for him, sitting in the 14th position in the 21. And then the last car on the lead lap is Robbie Gordon. Gordon would be in the top dozen. But I feel like they waited too long to make that final pit stop under green. Greg Biffle had brand new tires and was three seconds a lap faster than Gordon as he waited out the end of the cycle to make his stop. But Mike, like you and I were talking, I think they feel like they're darned if they do and darned if they don't. Three times, I think, this year we've seen him come to pit road early and get bitten by a right. caution flag. Tonight, he wanted to stay out there and not be the first one on pit road. Tell you what, though, guys, this lead is shrinking as we've got 11 laps to go. Only a second back to Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. I find it interesting that uh, all of a sudden Terry Labonte is hanging right on the back bumper of uh, Greg Biffle. Labonte in the 44, the Kellogg's yeah. car, with 22 cup wins, making his 54th Darlington start. He's been racing here since 1978. When he came in here and finished fourth in his first start. And you know both of those guys up there running one two. They've not been to victory lane this year. They certainly want to get there. Greg Biffle and Jeff Gordon. Well, I think Greg Biffle after finishing fourth last week, Larry, feels like he got the monkey off his back. If he can pull this off tonight, it'll be a big one. You're doing great. Ten to go. Let's do what we hope is the final update on the Darlington strike count tonight. Biffle's getting ready to come into some heavy traffic. Hey, 25, boys. Wow, and we're not done yet. We still got about nine and a half laps to go. Got plenty of time to add a couple. Yeah, that's way short of all the way around. But uh, slow traffic here, man, I tell you, it's hard to get through it without any problems. Jeff Gordon's closing, and we got traffic ahead. You know, it took Gordon a while to figure out this place. He has only one top 20 finish in his first five Darlington starts, but then 
Eight straight top threes, including five wins. Second here last May, third the year before. Let's see, three, two, that leaves one. It's just one of those racetracks when you go there, a lot like Daytona Talladega Road Course, you know Jeff Gordon is going to be one of the cars you're going to have to be. Well, I know y'all have heard me say it before, but Rick Hendry called me at the end of the 92 season and said, what you think about my rookie, DW? I said, Jeff, or uh, Rick, he'll never make it. <laughs> well, he torn 10 clips off Bill Davis's car Rick in the Bush Series the year before. Every race. <laughs> and $76 million later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to Rick today. He did today a pretty and, good uh, job. Yeah, Rick said, uh, yeah, DW, how's my, how's my rookie doing? <laughs> Now Biffle is starting yep. to pull away just a little bit. Yeah, Gordon's only gaining a tenth a lap, and there's only seven laps to go, and he's got to gain 11 tenths. Well, as long as he doesn't get up here and get hung up behind the 22 or some of these lap cars that he's coming up on, he'll be just fine. But, buddy, let me tell you, one lap car can slow you down, and, the lead, and that guy behind you can close up in a hurry. And now there are no cars between Biffle and Gordon. As when they come around this time, six to go. Oh, oh, Tony man. Stewart had it all hung out. Oh, man. Now, this is a battle for 12th right now. Two cars hanging on the lead lap, Tony Stewart and Mark Truex Jr. Yeah, well, the problem is... The leaders are coming. The leaders are coming, and that probably... I, I mean, with only a few laps to go, and I'm sure Tony is probably not worried about that. He's fighting for that position. But Biff was going to catch up to the back of all these slow... Or not slow cars. But the last car here, he's coming up on behind. First Blaney, then Schrader, then Wimmer. Biffle is a racing machine. How fast will it go? That's how fast I want to run it. Time to go, and so, to to go. Help on these next This is his Thank kind of racetrack. Yeah. You know, just hang it out. Greg Biffle is today's Buddy Baker. I got my foot on the floor. How long can I hold it there? How fast will it go? He doesn't have a lot of strategy. Right. It's just, it's just wide open. Exactly. Y'all fix me a better car if it breaks. He's just about to catch Dave Blaney in that 22 I'm car. Jeff Gordon these has slow cars. than he has the last two laps. Believe Four what I'm trying to tell you, buddy. These slow cars are going to mix it up. Jeff Gordon is within one second of Greg Biffle. You watch down here when they go in this corner now. Biffle's going to be hung up behind the 22 car. And his lead is off cut of, to six off of tenths. Turn two, he can't get back in the throttle because the two, 22's up there. Here comes Gordon, nibbling away. I guarantee you, Greg Biffle spotter is a very busy man on top of this roof right now. Yeah, he's making deals with those lap cars, not telling him about Jeff Gordon. And now the traffic is stacking up together. That could be tough. It's going to, to be, go. It's going to be tough, trust me. He's going to have to deal with Pretty Jeff go. Gordon one way or another. He's chopped a half a second the last two laps. And you don't just drive by these guys. These guys are all at the tail end of the lead lap, and they're not going to just get out of your way. And he cannot get by Dave Blaney in the 22 car. Jeff Gordon, no, three car lengths back. Now he'll go by him. And look how it seems. That he cost him. Clear. Held up Biffle, but Blaney moves out of the way for Biffle, and here comes Jeff. And Kenny Schrader in the 21. He's trying to stay on the lead lap. Two to go this time. Gordon drops to the bottom in four to take a shorter line, and he's just go. two Three car lengths minutes. away. Da, 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 da. He's coming. He's a coming. Both these drivers need a win to get their season rebounded. Gordon sixth in points. Still way way down. Run off two two that run off turn two down the back stretch. Schrader's going to yield to our leader, Greg Biffle. They'll be coming to the white right flag this time. And Gordon is there. One car length separate them with one lap to go. They're Damn sliding sir. around, got a clean racetrack in front of them. Biffle White White got a good run off four that time. Yeah, he did. Biffle well, stepped it way out that Schrader, time. Schrader tried to get out of the way, but it, it hurt Jeff the most. I think he's going to be all right this time. Uh, he's got a good run off of two. Gordon gets off two a little better, but Biffle gets off four. If Michael doesn't hold him up. It's Biffle to the finish line, and Walter drops way low on the racetrack. They're two by two, double wide up front. It's a good thing that this is the last lap. That's all I can say. Boy, Jeff Gordon drove it into turn three and four that time. Here it comes. Good Great job, Biffle. Biffle. Biffle wins the Dodge Charger 500 by two car lengths oh, over Jeff that. Gordon. Celebrate, boys, celebrate.
I like a good close oh, race. Job, buddy. Oh, my job. And that's going to catapult him yeah, approximately six positions in the points. This will bring Biffle to within 500 points of the lead and up to 14. I'll tell you what, I don't think Davis. Jeff Thornton, Schrader didn't do anything wrong, but Jeff couldn't get by Schrader on that last lap, and I don't think he was real happy with Schrader. Officially, Kent's a third, Johnson fourth, Earnhardt Jr. fifth, Newman sixth, Kyle Busch seventh, Martin eighth, Jeff Burton ninth, rookie Denny Hamlin ten. Look at the sidewalls on the tires, Larry. No lettering on them whatsoever. He's had that thing, he's been rubbing on everything out there. The Biffle knows how to do a burnout. Matter of fact, did he back it up in the fence down in Dover? Dover. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Biffle gets the win. He'll make the run around to victory lane, and so will we. And we welcome you to the Sprint Post Race Show, NASCAR on Fox from Darlington, South Carolina, under the lights where Greg Biffle, 36-year-old from Vancouver, Washington, finally into victory lane this year. After a lot of heartbreak, a repeat winner in this spring race here in Darlington. Let's head down to victory lane and Matt Yoka. After five finishes of 30th or worse this year, he picked up a lot of momentum at Richmond. It scores his first win of 2006 and did it in dramatic fashion. First off, what does this mean to you and this team to finally break through like this? Uh, it feels really good. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, I wish uh, my mom could be here this weekend and uh, I know a lot of mothers were here. and. Some stuff's going on, so she wouldn't be able to be here this weekend. But this wins for her and uh, this team. Uh, we never give up. You know, we won the poll last week and finished fourth. And uh, just everybody stood behind us 100%. National Guard and everybody. And uh, I'll say hi to my dad. I know he's not feeling well. And uh, just excited to be back in victory lane. The closing laps, you've got really what many consider the Darlington Master with Jeff Gordon. Six wins here, chasing you down. And then you hit all that traffic. What were you thinking then? I was praying for help. I was begging, Joel, please. Let them give me a lane, you know, let's let, give me the top, give me the bottom or something. And uh, you know what, uh, Kurt Busch could have raced the heck out of me and he, and he let me go on the top. Uh, he was the last car in the lead lap and and I uh, really appreciate it. And a lot of guys uh, just showed respect out there tonight. And uh, you know, a few more laps, Gordon would have got there, but uh, two in a row, I'm pretty excited. Back-to-back -back wins here at Darlington for Greg Biffle, his first though of 2006. And the guy who was chasing him down, is standing by with Dick Berger. And that would be Jeff Gordon, who absolutely drove his heart out for those last few laps. Was the car cooperating? Well, we started off a little bit too loose on that last uh, run, and I thought we were in big trouble, but uh, let those guys go and get out there and hope that we'd catch them like we had in the other long runs. And we started catching them, and uh, I made a little bit of a mistake. I got by Kenseth, and I got in the wall a little bit, down three and four, and I don't know if it knocked the toe out or what, but I picked up a big push, and I was shocked that I even caught the 16. We came up on some lap traffic, and we had a run on them. I had one one good opportunity and uh, a little bit more room from a lap car and I might have been able to get it turned underneath them but uh, still a great race fantastic job for the DuPont Chevrolet guys uh, Pepsi GMAC uh, Chevrolet everybody that uh, makes it happen for us this is a, a big moment for us we needed a run like this and uh, couldn't happen in a better place than here at Darlington uh, old school man <laughs> congratulations terrific job let's go to Steve Thank you, Dick, with points leader Jimmy Johnson, who finished fourth. Now, Jimmy, I heard you late in the race talk about needing more forward bite, but I have to ask, you got blocked trying to exit pit road on lap 316. Was that a difference in the outcome for you? I think it affected um, us from finishing third or second somewhere in there, but just kind of a racing incident on pit road. Trying to, I was trying to get out, the 20 was trying to get in, and I uh, got held up a little bit. But a great, great performance for us. Uh, qualifying didn't go like we wanted. We worked very hard trying to get this race car situated in the last practice. Had a good car, came from 25th to the front. A little too loose all night long, but uh, very happy with, uh, with our performance. I want to wish my mother and grandmother and mother-in-law a uh, happy Mother's Day, and I'll say hello to my wife. A smart racer. Congratulations on another yeah. top five. Points racing, points racing everywhere. There you go. That's a good point. No pun intended, Mike Joy. No, and a good night for Johnson. Let's have a look at the standings, which he leads the next Dell Cup. Tony Stewart by one point hung on to second over Matt Kenseth. New face in 10th place. Jeff Burton in uh, three of the last four races. He's finished top 10, so he climbs. Kevin Harvick down elevator, drops four spots. 
as we look at the second 10. That 400 point gap is right now at 10th place. Casey Mears, Dale Jarrett falling back just a bit there. And Biffle, he's gained 126 points on 10th place in just two races. He's coming. And I know we're not quite halfway through this 26 race schedule looking to Richmond, but the big question over the off season, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., could they make the chase? Top five finishes for both of them. Both of them pretty solidly in the top 10 in points right now. It done my heart pretty good to hear Jeff Gordon say this is old school race because I like old school racing and we saw a lot of it tonight. This and is I, a fun place to race. God They've done is. a lot of improvements here and uh, I think and hope we're going to be here for a long time. Just, Just keep shining. Speaking on of old school racing, next Saturday night under the lights, <laughs> a little all-star <laughs> uh, racing. Old school, new pavement at Charlotte, Oh, Chris. yeah. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of problems when we go. No, I don't know what problems. <laughs> hey, we got issues when we get to Charlotte. All right, thanks, guys. Sometimes a guy has to turn his season around in a moment on a play at a particular track and a move. And for Greg Biffle, he said he thought he felt he won last night and last weekend in Richmond when he came in fourth. He did win today. In your opinion, has he turned things around? I think definitely so, Chris. I think that's what you've got to do. If you want to be a championship chase contender, you've got to never give up. And I think it's what this entire number 16 crew did tonight. They kept beating and banging, beating and banging, working on our race car. Doug Richard did a great job as far as calling the race, but in the end, Greg Biffle got up on that wheel when he knew Jeff Gordon was coming, and he made the difference. Dale Earnhardt Jr., a little under the weather, as he told us, hung in there to finish fifth. Of course, uh, good runs from Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon as well to finish in the top five. Next weekend from Charlotte, Lowe's Motor Speedway. Begin the weekend Friday on speed, and of course, Saturday night under the lights. Mark Martin won the All-Star Challenge last year. Let's see how he handles this year's race. Coming up, Matt TV for many or your late local news. Promotional consideration provided by these fine people. You know, early in the day, we talked about uh, points leader Jimmy Johnson extending his points lead to the largest it's been this season. Also, uh, DW nicknamed Dale Jarrett's Car a four <laughs> furious. He'll be going to Toyota next year for Daryl Airy and Mike, Steve Mattendick, and Jeff Hammond and his asphalt that he's carrying around from the track here at Darlington. And for our entire production crew, I'm th uh, Chris Myers. Thanks for watching NASCAR on Fox. To all you moms, happy Mother's Day.